happiest day of my life. And then mm-hmm. the murders began. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the happiest day of your life. I met the love of my life on a Tuesday. <laughs> and then the murders and began. Then murders began. <laughs> hey, everybody, we're alive. Don't mind us. <laughs> We're idiots. We're all idiots. Oh my god! <laughs> Are there any Moby Dick fans in the house? We can say, and then the "Call me again. Ishmael," and then the murders <laughs> again. <Yeah. laughs> oh boy! I tell you, uh, yeah, we've been just in here giggling for the last ten minutes. <laughs> I can't even talk right now. Jesus. Uh, I guess we're gonna do D and D or something tonight. I don't know. <laughs> At this point, I don't really care. Jesus. Oh my god. Uh, all right, let me collect myself. Ooh. Ooh, I'm just looking. What's the first line of the player's handbook? So, so what Please you missed, Idiota, was I mentioned that I oh, saw no. a meme on my Facebook that said. The first sentence of every story would be more profound if the second sentence was, and then the murders began. Right. <laughs> so we've I've got the player's this. handbook. Let me read this. <laughs> Once upon a time, long, long ago, in a realm called the Midwestern United States, specifically the states of Minnesota and Wisconsin, <laughs> a group of friends gathered together forever the history of gaming. <laughs> and then the murders, then the murders began. began. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now read the joke second line. Uh, the next, okay, the next line. It wasn't their intent to do so. <laughs> oh my gosh! It says that it wasn't their intent to do so. <laughs> uh, you're oh crying. You're making everyone cry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> so yes that is what you missed kitty Oda. it has been like 10 minutes of us saying sentences followed by and then the murders began <laughs> oh. So, oh that's yeah. great the next line really is it wasn't their intent to do so <laughs> oh, here's another fun funny one reality skewed gamers is now live streaming and then the murders began. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's try the monster manual this bestiary is for storytellers and world builders. And then the world murders begin. <laughs> God, I'm afraid to look at the DM guide. Oh, God. Let's see. Y'all started this nonsense. Oh, my gosh. So I just pulled up a website. I just pulled up a website that's the 100 best first lines from novels. And, I mean, every single one of these. Is... This, is, this is the DM one. It's good to be the dungeon master. And then the murders begin. <laughs> that, is, that is very accurate. <laughs> <laughs> the player's handbook. Yeah, that one's accurate. <laughs> it wasn't their intent to do so. <laughs> oh, my God. <sighs> what are we doing? I don't, I don't even know anymore. God. I guess we'll play some D and D. Jesus, hi We're everybody. About murder things. <laughs> yeah, apparently well, they sure did last week. Woo! All right, uh, we're gonna play some Dungeons and Dragons Wild Mount campaign here on RSG. It's Saturday night. We do D and D this time. I'm your dungeon master and uh, can't see because my glasses are actually fogged up now from laughing and crying so hard. God, I'm not kidding on that. Um, so we're gonna do some Dungeons and Dragons. <sighs> God, words are hard right now. Um, so um, we're I'm gonna let everybody introduce themselves, and we're just gonna get into this because I, I don't really have anything else for you right now. Oh boy, that was just classic RSG. Okay, uh, Grim, introduce your character, please. Oh, I'm playing Drumzal, the party's orc cleric. All right. Uh, You're invisible again, by the way, Grim. He knows. Just FYI. I know it's intentional. I've been having okay. issues with my camera for the past freaking week. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. The last Windows update screwed up its drivers. Mm. And, so then the to to <laughs> and then the murders began. And then the murders began. For real. <laughs> oh, my God. <sighs> Bad Rongo, I'm afraid to ask. Introduce your character, please. Uh, Togar Listinix, the old dragonborn bard. All right, say And thought. then the murders begin. Stop! <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> it cannot be contained. Oh my God. <sighs> Corinth. 
I'm paddling your dwarven elder tonight. Thank you. All right. Uh, Johnny Mo. Playing as Reed Tea Leaf Halfling Rogue. There you go. Chris, Christy. I'm playing Critty. I'm a half elf bard. That's right. Um, Dr. Finn Medicine Woman. I am Balin Nightfeeder, a human sorcerer. Mm-hmm. We have we have Gara. I am playing a Asimar Paladin. That's right. And then last but not least, from her week off, she had busy week last week, but she's back with us. The lovely Ouchie Dumpling. I'm Elioni. I'm a high elf, not literally. Um, <laughs> yeah, you are. Singer. Although you were. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, even Cheech and Chong that were watching the stream was like, oh, oh wow. Damn, Holmes, look what she's smoking, man. She's talking hard. All right. Um... He's the sabbatical elf. <laughs> yes, currently on sabbatical. She's in her room right now. Everything's been going down around her, but she's sleeping one off. She got Dreaming she of had, a demon. She, that's not about, well, why does it got to be a demon? I don't know if it's to be a demon. Uh, because that's the one that she fell in love with. She's chasing after that, she did, the brooding she did demon. Fall, she did fall mm-hmm. That's true. Well, Might it, also have narcolepsy. That's true. <laughs> she just has a thing for bad boys. And so. I invented Febreze. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you forget it. All right. Uh, what else? Uh, all right. So. Uh, normally I just do the intro, but I think we're, we're past this crap. Let's just get into what happened last week. I can't even think right now. Uh, last week where we left our band of married adventurers, as, uh, Ouchie said, her character was inactive because, uh, she had a lot of fun as they all did the previous night on, the on the island of <laughs> the island of, oh, I can't forget the damn, the damn the Palma Flora. God, I couldn't even think of the name of that. Um, and, um, had a good time. Then they woke up the next day, did some research. They went and got, were trying to find some information about this, the, the artifact that they're looking for. Um, and met up with the sea witch of the local area, uh, a witch of some sort, uh, they call her the sea witch. And, um, Turned out very pleasant conversation. It was a blind lady, very beautiful, but uh, you know, didn't couldn't really give them specifics. Just could tell them about the local legend and lore and past history and things of that nature. But nothing that really kind of honed them into what they were they were the, any specifics of where they needed to go or what they needed to do. But it did give them some clues on what to do. So they made their way back. They checked on Ellie. Ellie was still passed out on the bed and and sleeping very well. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and then they said, you know what, let's go watch the shark hunting contest. And they made their way there. And as they did, all of a sudden, a giant earthquake rocked the entire island. And then the murders began. I swear to Christ. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. wrong. <laughs> it's true. You have to wait for the moment when you can break the DM at the maximum point. Well, that's D&D for tonight, folks. Thanks for being here. Glad to have you guys. <laughs> Um, but, uh, he's not wrong. Um, the, the, uh, the entire island shook, uh, with an earthquake and then, um, set off a chain of events. T- some waves, giant waves came in, not tidal waves, but pretty close came in and started crashing in. People started fleeing in terror. Um, and then after that, multiple earthquakes keep hitting the island. Um, uh, but at the same time, uh, this, they were invaded by Sahagwing. Uh, and these are reptile monsters. Um, and uh, our band of adventurers saw. How do you spell that? I, I, you know, I let me find it. it it's it's S A H U A G I G I N. S A H Flem. Flem. No, S A H U A G I N. So Sahuin or Sahuin. I, I don't know how to, it doesn't have like a way to pronounce it. So they're soggy. G-I-N? Yeah, G I N. G I N. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um. So, um, instead of running, their brave adventurers fought off the initial onslaught from the south part of the island, um, trying to save and be a buffer as everybody else flees off the island. Um, but two people, if they want to make a perception check, feel free to go ahead and make our first roll of the evening and making a a, a, a perception check. 
I'm a uh, I'm fairly decent at perception. Mm-hmm. Anybody else? Plus ten. Same here. Okay. Make a roll. One of it. All right. So two of us. Yeah, you guys. Not hard to figure out as you start seeing water starting to seep through, and as you feel another wave come over, a smaller one. It doesn't take you guys long to figure out that uh, the island is sinking. Not parts of it. You guys look around and you're starting to see houses breaking apart and cracks starting to form. You estimate probably 10, 15 minutes at max you guys have until this water is completely submerged and sunk into the ocean. Well, I'm all in favor of evacuating the island. I'm going to I'm going to grab Hadlin and be like, "Hey Hadlin, um how about we go uh back towards that bridge and not for any reason that you should be concerned about and what's <laughs> Oh, Drom's already at the bridge blinders and going across it. Put blinders After all that happened. <laughs> Sounds good, Cody. Let's go. What are we what are we doing with this little elf person? Not the one that we killed, but the one that we saved. <laughs> oh, just for looking at him like you may want to leave. <laughs> he killed Come with two. us if you want to live. All right. So everybody makes their way to the bridge. All right. Everybody move your characters to the bridge. Uh, as I'm going, I'll certainly, you know, sort of peek in some of the windows, see if there's any people yelling and like, get off the island. It's going down. What is the thing in the middle again, Ranger? It's a statue of you. <clears throat> is it? Falling off a horse. No, it's I mean... not. It's a statue to a deity. You can make an arcana check if you want. Yeah. But then I'd have to go research it. So it's just a deity. <laughs> Well, okay. I just want to know if I can recognize that it is a deity. Yeah, it's a deity. It's a deity? Okay. Yeah. Um, how big is the statue? Uh, about 16 feet. <clears throat> how much do you think it weighs, roughly? A couple thousand pounds, at least. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, let me just check something here. Why is this doing that? I have no idea. That's so weird. You could touch the statue and then the murders begin. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> All right, Johnny, where did you go? I'm going to be the first time he's done that, by the way. <laughs> Over just past these houses. So okay, go, ran up. go there. You see, as you're uh, going over there, you see a little girl running uh, this way. And then you see, um... now, why is that not letting me? The shit is that? That's the little girl? <laughs> no, that is not the little girl. It's supposed to be, hold on, it's not giving, letting me uh, scoop it up. Give me a moment. It's one of those mm -hmm. sanguine creatures. That's a, the salguins, right? Yeah. Okay, objects and tokens. I'd like to grab this thing. So, yes, you see it chasing this little girl this way as she's screaming. Uh, I'll sort of hide a little bit so that I've got an optimal shot as it comes into range. He's He's got his trident up. You're going to have to react. You have a reaction here. If you don't do something, he's going to stab her. Oh, I'm going to shoot him right in the head then. All right, go ahead. You do have surprise attack, so go for it. Uh, that's a nat 20 for a third. Uh, I'm not even going to bother. Oh, he uh, explodes. <laughs> <laughs> the assassin rogue with the crit on the assassinated. Uh, <laughs> just out of curiosity, that's uh, 50. That's a lot of numbers. It's that's a lot about of numbers. 75 damage yeah, or he, so he, uh, You literally, like... <laughs> <laughs> he ceases to exist. It's like he was never born. Yeah. Somewhere. And this is how the murders began. Then... Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> that was. <laughs> that's, that and really... the assassinations began. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how big is the little uh, girl? She's uh, just a little bit taller than you. Well, I'm not going to pick her up then. I'm going to take her hand. Come on with me, lass. She's just crying. All right. So you've got a little girl with you right now. So remember that. Okay. As you all get to, you guys are all there, and we'll say the elven. Is there any other people all that we can hear or anything at this oh, point? Oh, yeah, there's all kinds of pandemonium. We're all at the, for the front of the bridge because I'm about to tell you what's happening here. But okay. let me uh, try to make this crap work. All right. I'd like you all here to go here. And then if I go here, and then back here. No, you're going to make me do this individually, aren't you? Cock, son of a 
<sighs> One moment, please. <laughs> I want to do this thing in Roll20, and then the murders began. <laughs> mm. Every bloody time. Also very accurate. <laughs> I don't know why they put them on that other layer. So it, it makes me, if I want to interact with you guys, instead of going back and forth, because eh, you can't see them, they're, they're like transparent, right? So I have to always bring these to the forefront. Duh, dog it. Every one of them? Really? Oh, they're on the, the other layer? Yeah, I have to bring them uh. to the token layer. And then I have to go heal and then go back here. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right. Um, all right. So what you guys see in front of you. Let me get some music started. Sorry, we had, we, the murders were beginning, so I couldn't get the music started. Um, come on. Um, so you see that the 50-foot wide, um, I mean, it's a pretty big, big bridge. Uh, and you can see the gap that separates the floor island from the rest of uh, the the rest of Palma Flora. Uh, is and pa is is uh, it, it, you see most of the people are over there. There's a few stragglers are trying to get over, um, but you can see that the bridge is starting to fall apart. It's been it's just been rocked by the earthquake. Um, you can see that as on the other side, you can see there's been some damage to the northern part. You guys are on the southern island here. Um, but you see all the people fleeing in droves, right? Then one of the reasons you see that, um, there's six villagers on this bridge uh, right now. Why is there only two? Okay, let's put the villagers on the thingy. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Stop it. All right, there's... How are they dressed? Hold on. What are they wearing as they flee for their lives? I will tell you in a moment. Once I they're like a sailor. Quit touching the damn worker. people. We inquired about what the villagers were wearing, and then the murders began. Oh, are these are those the villagers on the bridge right now? Yeah. Okay. Are they in various letter shaped poses? So you can see that there is a. Uh, just some of the. This is, it's hard. I mean, um, two look kind of hoity-toity you know they were d dressed not over the top but very nice stuff the other ones are more of your locals right that were wearing you know the very loose fitting clothes and garb and stuff they're stuck on the bridge and it's starting to fall as you see that um for some reason and you notice in the water it's very red and it's a horrifying scene as you see sharks are eating everything that has fallen into the water right now um, and um, these people are trying to get across and just then everybody make an athletic strength check because uh, another rumble comes in. Ranger, am I still asleep in Yeah, in you the... have not yet. Okay. You're you're uh, in right. sweet slumber. Okay, good. All right. Carry on. <laughs> Okay. Uh, <clears throat> or Cordy. We're I a very failed, athletic group. At least, yeah. <clears throat> uh, Togar, Balin, you fall right on your butts as the, the, the rumbling shake you up a little bit. Cordy, mm -hmm. you just, I don't know what happens, but you literally <laughs> fall awkwardly and hit your head. You take a point of damage. I don't know how, but you did. <laughs> just like an owl, why kind of thing. You know, like when you just stub your toe or something kind of thing, action. Um, Beach sand in the eye. I was yeah. more concerned with the people I was looking at. I didn't watch where I was going. Yeah. Uh, everybody else is fine. You do need this the, br the bridge is starting to break again. And one of the comment, uh, one of the uh, people, one of the uh, hoity toity guys uh, is uh, falls into the water with all the sharks and then you see immediately well i'm going to give somebody a reaction if you want to do something but he's in the water now how far is the drop on the bridge it's about 15 feet uh the bridge itself does it have rails or anything like that it did they no longer exist all right but are um, the posts still there that would have anchored them not much but the, the bridge is left you guys are gonna have to make a decision here so the decision that fo that you guys are faced with 
someone's in the water. Do I'm gonna use my Hold on, let, let me, before we do anything, you okay. can, you have to get across here too. The island's sinking and you're gonna be in the water. Um, the people are stuck in the middle there. So you have to either get them across and you have one that's in the water right now. So, that being said, so we can get people's order what they wanna do in this reaction, everybody, and I'm gonna reset this first. All right, everybody roll initiative just so we can give people a chance in order to say what they want to do. Critty, I think you need to like, <laughs> Critty falls over again and this time stubs her wow. toe. <laughs> <laughs> it is one of those days for Critty. <laughs> Actually, no. It's a good thing, Critty. Get all the natural ones out now. Oh, oh God. Yeah. Just get them all out now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we can figure out a way to save the villagers. Get it all out uh, now. Oh, <laughs> my God. Critty, for some reason, you stubbed your, your other toe, and you're like, ow. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. No, I don't want to send it. I want descending. Stop it. All right. <laughs> and then the murders begin. <laughs> and then the murders yeah. begin. After two natural ones, Critty. <laughs> He went on a killing spree. <laughs> oh my god. All right, everybody roll. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven rolls. Ah, 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 ah. Um, okay. Um, sure, you are. Well, who's got the higher decks? Uh, sure, you are Togar. I only have a plus one to dex. What do you have, Ashira? I have a plus seven. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Why are you throwing up? Wait, plus seven? I think that's probably to our saving throw. Oh, oh yeah. What's your actual dex number? Well, no. It can't okay, be more than well, a plus that five. that was the wrong number. Uh, dex. <laughs> dex. Probably like a three, then. I, I'd be crushed uh, if the paladin has a better two. dex than me. Plus, plus two. two. Yeah, I was going to say. All right, so yeah, you were wow. still. I was like, damn. Um, so, uh, I'm sure you still get to go first. You get a reaction here, and then the the next round will be your normal round, but this is a reaction. What do you do? Where do you go? What's your first reaction that you're going to do? One reaction. So one action, one action only. There is somebody falling into the water? Oh, they fell into the water, yeah, after this last rumble. Am I supposed to be saving them? You can do whatever can you want. Them, yeah. So it's up to you, Sierra. So you, there's a person that just fell in the water. You see the people on the bridge are trying to get across, but they're now all flattened. The bridge is starting to fall apart. What do you do? Um. Oh God, Grand is in the chat. Uh, I gotta ignore I, chat now. I, I don't know. You want to hold your action and think about it? Um. I'll come back to you. I. I. I will cast Aura of Vitality. Okay. Did I cast it? Yep. All right. So I did that. That is my action. Okay. Aura of Vitality is activated. All right. Uh, Togar. I just. I am going to. Ah, why is make it not a, you're going to make a Constitution saving throw. You did very well. I, I'm clicking on the DOS loot, the levitate, because I want to cast levitate on the one that fell down below. All right. Let's try this one. Yeah, it's not giving the description. No, I get what you're saying. There we go. So I'm going to use half my movement Hold to on. get back up because I'm prone, right? What did you roll before? You you, you rolled a 13 or 14, didn't you? For what was your athletics roll? check? Yeah, what was your athletics check? Uh, and I think it was an 11. Yeah, you yeah, fell. Yeah, Togar here. and I fell. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm just reading this this spell here. Yeah, you can do this. Uh, so the person comes floating out of the water. Okay, so they're right. they're levitating there right now. They're not they can't move anywhere. They're just hovering twenty feet right now. Right, but they're you know above the sharks. Right, basically. And you, see, and you see, you just say this person's life because 
the, the it's a very chummy watery scene with lots of mm -hmm. not pretty pictures in fact hadlin before we do anything you see this i need you to make what do i want you to roll here A wisdom saving throw. Eighteen with Shira. What order does she have on right now? Does she have well it's just natural. Mm. You will cross the bridge, Hadlin, but you have disadvantage on athletics checks to cross it because water this scene ain't happening for you but you are able to cross so you're not uh you're not having your mr t moment thank mm -hmm. god for sure all right uh all right so togar does that now it's your turn Havlin. what are you doing buddy you will you will cross but uh you have disadvantage to try to cross if you do or whatever you, you any other stuff you're gonna have but i'm not you're not scared Okay, yeah, I'm not so scared that I want a bowling ball through all those innocent human beings. Uh, yeah, you're right before you're, you're right at, tinkering on the edge, but you're not going to go Kool Aid Man here. Okay. <laughs> uh, guys, I need to get off this island like real quick before the murders begin. Just so you know. I take it back. You do not want to cross the bridge now. <laughs> you want to do the murders. <laughs> Yeah, we need to get me off this island quick, guys. Cause yeah, I'm gonna run through these guys, and it ain't gonna be pretty. What's your reaction? What are you doing? I'm holding right now. You're gonna hold. We'll right come back to you. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Well, let's just say that I'm. I'm probably not laughing at Critty as she fall over, fell over twice. <laughs> Definitely. Well, oh, you're not even caring about that. You really are like, because mm -hmm. that bridge likes looks like you. If it collapses anymore, you might uh, be going for a glub glub swim swim. All right, we'll come back to you, Helen. Uh, let me know what you want to do before, uh, as the end, as the turn ends. Read tea leaf, then Drom, you're up. What are you doing there, Read tea leaf? All right, uh, I have a grappling hook, 50 feet of rope. How far is it from this post to that post? Yeah, it's it's it says 37, 30 feet. It's actually double that. It's about 60 feet. So I can't make it be accurate. So it's about 60 feet across from from. Uh, from one point to the other. All right, uh, can I go far enough out onto the bridge and sort of dig the grappling hook into what's left of the bridge, tie the rope to an arrow and shoot the arrow across to the other post? This way there's at least a guide rope. Yeah, go for it. What are you gonna shoot right. at though? Uh, the post at the far end. This All way right. at least there's a guideline that goes All down. Right. This the is a call shot, the so there will be a DC associated with this. So ro roll your attacks. Can I get hit him with guidance before he takes the shot? Like um, as he's knocking the arrow, I, I no. Nah, this is know, a reaction. He just because this okay. is a reaction. I'm giving you guys a free shot at doing something. Um, okay. Yeah, that's why I asked. Twenty-one to hit. Yeah, it'll hit. Um, nice. So you shoot that across. Uh, wait, well, you're gonna have to move onto the bridge to do this because you only have fifty yeah. feet of road in the sixty. So where do you move? So I, I mean, would that be enough to give me? The clear line right at the far post and be able to dig that grapple. Yeah, make in. an athletics check to see if you can. Uh, athletics or acrobatics, whichever one's easier for you to maintain your balance here. 19? Yeah, you do it easily enough. So you're able to get the rope. You always need some rope. Huh. Charlie Bronson always carried. <laughs> you need, well, no one, anything you're going to need is a rope. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, who's next? Uh, Drom, what are you doing, buddy? Your reaction. Okay, I have a, a question for you. Would the control water spell, would I be able to, like, get a wave up to this dude that's levitating and use the water to push him over towards the shore? Um, that's a good question. Let me look at the spell and see what it... Yeah, let me uh, post the... That's really the, clever, the, dude. That is um, a good idea. Control water. You're splashing him with bloody chummy water, but I mean, hey, things could be worse. Mm -hmm. And there's that like one foot shark yeah, that comes up with it and just bites his nose off. Water. That's why I'm pulling up in the book. Uh, 
No, not control weather. Yeah, it if would not, be the I'll redirect. try to lasso him. It looks like <laughs> yeah, it's the can. redirect flow. Yeah, you can redirect flow. That'll work. Okay, I'm good. Do just, that. But just make no. an attack roll to see if you can hit him with the water. You still have to control, but you have to aim and hit him because he's levitating 20 feet in the air. So you have to hit him with the water see, to push I him. Click on cast. Will it roll for me, maybe? No, just do a normal attack roll with your uh, spell modifier. Oh, okay. Uh, spell attack plus seven. 20 plus seven. You. You're lucky this is a low DC, man. <laughs> Thank you, Roll20, for wanting to kill this guy. <laughs> it, it, it pushes him to about here. Yeah, trying to push him towards the north. Yeah, it easily does. So he gets enough momentum, you know, he free falls over that way. What's the range of your spell there, Togar? Uh, let me look at it again. I think it's 60 feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 60 feet. Yeah, he gets over there and goes, boop, because he's outside the range of your spell now. <laughs> your spell is, but he is safe. The momentum kind of threw him, and then he's off there. All right, so he's that is your that is your free action. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, balloon, then um, Critty, and then uh, the decision of Hadalyn. All right, what are you doing, Balloon? Okay, uh, might be a weird question. The villagers... Um, their how how do they uh look in terms of size normal five foot four to six feet tall i mean normal human like average weight and everything too uh, giants yes there's <laughs> they're they're ants fan i didn't want to tell you but they're ants mm -hmm. so whatever you want to do can easily be done no, okay, just your average size there's nothing they're average and then we added read okay um, I will stand up and then use telekinesis on the bridge to keep it floating, to keep it sturdy. They're gonna make me look up telekinesis. Not... How I want to? How yeah, I'll, I'll post it. But it's okay. I, I prefer looking at it in the book because okay. that way I can kind of look at it and use the force balloon. That's not how the force works. Mm. It's not just moving rocks. Using telekinesis. Yeah, it's you can like move electronics and vehicles. And... <laughs> That's the only time you ever see them really use it. I'm so happy I just did something simple. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like the biggest limitation on this would just be the thousand pound limit. Like yeah, how, that's why I was asking the about the size of the So, yeah. okay, so here's the deal. This this bridge is heavy. It is big and sturdy. It is falling apart. If you do this, you can hold the bridge up. Mm -hmm. But that's the only thing you're going to be able to do. You're going to have to concentrate your ass off to hold this bridge up. And it is taxing your ass each time. You're gonna, each round, you're going to have to make a con, uh, a con, a constitution saving throw to maintain just the sheer... You know, yeah. you're, you know, like, can you see people in the movies are like holding it and stuff and you're giving it everything you got. All right. So we'll roll that on your next turn. Um, okay. All right. Critty, your turn. Frog in my throat. Okay. So I'm going to stand up you because I keep falling over. Yeah. And I'm going to cast a fifth level conjure animals. Okay. I'm going to conjure four giant eagles. And I'm going to have one of them take Hadalyn to the other side of the shore. And I'm going to pick up the three um, villagers that are further away and take them over to the safety of the shore. Okay. Um... <laughs> All of a sudden, this episode turned into to giant, The giant Hobbit. Giant eagles can carry a oh, I know. They are. of 300 pounds. They okay. start to grab. So uh, just roll me a d20 four times. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, you can get two over. Okay. I'm going to take Hadalyn because I'm concerned about him, and I'm going to take this uh, villager that is the furthest away. This one right here? Okay. So you get them over. Hadalyn, you're thinking, you're pondering your future, and all of a sudden this giant eagle comes up from nowhere behind you, scoops you up, and flies you over and gently brings you to the other side. 
Right. I'm Meanwhile, the villagers. Bright axe. I'm coming. The home. other two tried to go in there, but they couldn't grasp because the the bridge is moving and stuff. Critty, they just weren't able to get their claws, and then they had to fly back up again. I mean, they can make another try on the next turn if possible, but yeah, they they're just they're having difficulty trying to grab the people. All right. Um, that's your turn, and Hadlin, we don't have to do anything with you. You're just, you're, you're sweet, wonderful land is underneath your feet as you land gently. I'll go over and secure the, help secure the rope that, that Reed fired. All right. That's your reaction then. There you go. You're holding the rope. All right. Back the line. to the top of the round. You guys, I'm going to be very clear. You have two rounds to get across this bridge and do what you're going to do. Not only that, but two rounds before not only the bridge goes, but this island's going to start going really start to sink. You guys can feel little rumbles and you can hear like little cracks and explosions as buildings are starting to crack and bend from the cracks in the, the, uh, the island forming. So you guys, whatever you guys decide, decide now you have two rounds to get to the other side or you're going to be gleb glebbing in the water soon. Well, you're not going to be able to get over because the bridge is, you can tell that the bridge is, uh, you might get another well, round. It right yeah, now, right? the reason you have two extra rounds is because somebody named Balloon is holding it up right now. Okay. Um, Ashir, what are you doing? And then uh, Togar, your turn. I can guess we go back to I'm... the restaurant, guys? This is kind <laughs> of not fun. <laughs> Told you something like this would happen. Hey, at least you're over there. Yeah. I am going to... I'm going to Radiant Soul. Very nice. I am going... And, uh... Can oh. I carry someone? I don't think you can when you're in Radiant Soul. Let me check it. I don't think you're able to carry anybody. But let me, let me check on that for you. So I use the book. So they're a little. It doesn't say for sure, but well, I'll say just from just the mechanics of what I've used in previous games, um, you can carry what your strength will allow, um, but your, your your flying speed is halved when you're carrying somebody because you have that extra weight. So you you can carry someone, but you're gonna you're gonna go only as fast as your you know instead of flying like sixty, you can only fly thirty feet because you got you're carrying something or someone. It's heavy. And that gets less, and the, the lighter it is, the the more movement speed you get back. But if if you're looking at picking up a person or something, yeah, your your movement speed will be halved. Anyone need a ride? What about that? Grab one of the villagers. Uh, the, the little girl with me. She should be okay. fairly light for you. Yeah, that, that wouldn't really hamper you at all. Okay, I will grab the little girl and... I think I could make it about. Yeah, you, you're not gonna be hindered by her. Yeah, you're not gonna be hindered by her. So whatever your flying speed is, just keep it normal. She's a little bitty thing. Um, I mean that that 
that is my flying speed. Oh, well, what I is, guess. What's your what's your movement speed when you're flying? It's thirty. Thirty? Okay. That'd have been doubled. You know what? It doesn't say how if you it says you can fly. You can fly. You can fly. You can fly. All right. Uh, all right. So you're right there. Okay. And uh, I grab the girl, and that's where I am. There you go. All right, Togar, who is Lestinky, uh, it's your turn. Okay, so a giant elk. What? A giant elk. A giant elk. Which is a huge beast. Yeah. Would and it's fifteen feet tall, fifteen foot long. Yeah. Would you? How many of those villagers do you think a giant elk would be able to carry? Please. Please don't put an elk on the bridge when there's a weight limit that I'm trying to hold off. <laughs> You'll still be able to hold it. Finn. Oh my god. Don't metagame. Turkey. I really wanted him to summon the elk. Me, me too. Okay. I and I'm, I'm honestly kind of hoping that like all the villagers on the bridge still look like the 86 bears. Yeah. I'm trying I'm trying to think <laughs> of a you can do that. Less than uh it's um, like the it's like the size of a horse, right? It's like someone in a horse on on the bridge. But not the polar bear or plesiosaur who can swim. Just plesiosaur would be awesome. I'm just saying. Or you know something that can fly. Just... <laughs> I can only transform myself into one giant eagle, and so I'm not mm -hmm. trying to. I'm trying to take more than one of the villagers off of the bridge. With the giant eagle should be able to grasp one in each talon and potentially no, have just one, one per, it can only you grab can one say person. it should but Finn, it's so much you can funnier say it should, for we already had a giant eagle swoop but down and grab, grab one so grab much funnier one. for one ton grab animals one. You can come back yeah it failed to grapple it tried to do it so you <laughs> should be able to at least attempt to there were four yes. giant eagles each giant eagle got to try to pick up one villager and two giant eagles Missed. picked up one villager Two giant eagles missed. So I, then, out therefore, of curiosity. the precedent has been set in today's episode that giant eagles. Can I want to get back to the giant elk horse thing. Where, where would you at, like that to be? Out of curiosity, are the villagers actually like moving or? Uh, they're trying to, but they're kind of like prone on the ground right now because they just got knocked over, and they're trying to get back up. But the ah, bridge just kind of. They're prone. That 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 was uh, a, okay. That was a key piece they of got information. Down, but they'll get up again. Yeah, <laughs> you can never really keep them down. Uh, so basically, I wanted to ask how many villagers do you think would fit on a giant elk? Because that's two my at least. Factor. A horse can carry at least two, maybe three people. So well, a giant elk villagers, would be able to think that three. Uh, let's say two. Would for you know for for let's just just make it a nice round number of two. Okay, so if I'm only getting two, then I'm worried about the return. I wanted to be able to get at least three or not four. three would be pushing it you know can we let the dice decide can you give me a dc on that no because i'm just thinking of how a horse is if you can put three people on a horse but you're going to be really hampered you can try to get three on there you're going to be super hampered trying to get across this bridge i'm just saying you can risk it if you want to do it i'll allow it but you're going to have disadvantages on all your rolls remember this is an unsteady bridge All right, fuck it. Why don't I use my? This is this is a big moment. This I'm. It's a very big moment in your life. Yes, I know. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna I'm not gonna do the giant elk. Okay. Instead, I'm gonna use my my emergency polymorph, and I'm going to transform into a green dragon so that I can swoop down and grab all four of the villagers that are on there. I should be able to grab one with each talon and then have like the other two kind of like jump on my back, right? You could pick them all up as an adult green dragon. Are you kidding me? All right. Then that's what I'm doing to get them all in one foul swoop. All right. You do that. You turn uh, everybody uh, that's around. Where's Where are you right now, Togar? Uh, you're, uh, let's see here. Over there? 
Yeah, Critty and Drom, uh, make athletic check because he's transformed into a, a, a adult green dragon. And his giant form literally forces you to flee and get knocked over as <laughs> this giant form of a dragon appears next to you. <laughs> yeah, Critty, you're able to stand your feet this time. You, but yeah, kind of awkwardly, I, you're still feeling the sting of your toes from the previous attempts. And then, uh, Drom, not so much. You get knocked uh, on your butt. You're you're prone again. There's this giant dragon, and then you just hear the people on the bridge go, ah! <laughs> and people on the other shore, you just hear, ah! <laughs> all right, what do you do, buddy? All right, so I'm 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 flat out. I'm coming up like <laughs> into the middle. Over, yeah, I'm yeah. grabbing all of them, tell them to come up on me. They, they just it's be easier for you just to scoop them up with your claws all and right. stuff. So scoop just roll up. up. So roll a um, athletics check to see if you can grab all of them that are on there. Mm, how do I roll an athletics check as the dragon? I don't have a. It's your sheet. strength check plus your natural let me see what a green dragon now you're gonna make me look it up hold on i'll tell you what it is you said adult green dragon yes sir okay. i'll be right back let's see adult dream green dragon strength is a 23 so a plus six you want me to do a d20 plus six yeah but there's something else you get hold on It's not just your strength or something else added to it. So hang tight there, buddy. Alright. I was just trying to help. No, no, it's appreciated. Uh just trying to dragons are a little different. No, I don't want dinosaurs. Although the section of dinosaurs is pretty dope. What if I want a dinosaur? They got every dinosaur you can imagine in this book. It's crazy. Like really? I bet you a life-size Velociraptor would have rescued them all. Uh, Drawn, it's weird. You uh, explode and die. It's strange. <laughs> and then the murder began. Okay, green, 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 green. It's a wormling. Oh wait, I think I can roll it from there. There you go. I can roll it from the the features and traits. There you from go. From the extras menu. There you go. Cool. I was about to. I was about to. <laughs> you got it. So yeah, uh, you're able to get all the villagers and and uh, easily get to the other. Side. Yeah, I think that's not going to be a problem. So there you are. Cool. I'm not going to turn you into a giant green dragon because I'd have no way to fit you on there. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> so the other villagers go with you, and you get them safely across. Here, I'll find a, I'll find a thing to turn myself into it. No, please don't. <laughs> it's gonna be Puff the Magic <laughs> Dragon. <laughs> no, I was just trying to find a little dragon icon in the thing. If oh, I've got available. plenty of them, but just the, they always make them big, and then I have to shrink them and stuff. Because when you like, I've got a whole companion, but when I put like a green yeah, yeah. dragon the size, it's like Jesus, it takes up half the damn screen. All right, uh, so Tagar saves the day. The, all the villagers are now off the off the bridge. All right, Hadlin is on the other side. Reed, you, you shot the rope. You got the rope on, but uh, uh, the rope is no longer needed. Uh, what's this fella right there in the middle? Well, he's supposed to be gone, so. Okay, okay. Yeah, it was one of the villagers that was scooped it up. I'll, uh... I'll slash the rope quick, repocket the grappling hook that I dug into the bridge, and then I'll uh, use the the rope to sort of just make sure I have a, a clean enough guideline, uh, and I'll go my full 25 feet, and then... Uh, Do you want to just... Uh, 
dash, basically. Dash, yeah, basically. So just do an acrobatics or athletic check, whichever one's better for you to... I mean, Balin's holding the bridge up, but it's pretty... 19. Yeah, you get across easily. So go ahead and put yourself All right. across. All right. Uh, Drum, what are you doing, buddy? I am running back to the computer. Hold on a second. <laughs> I, I got up to get a drink. Figures. That's okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, what is it? Is it just us that is left? Is there any nope, civilians in the water or uh, still? Or? Uh, she went across already. I would just say she got across. She probably jumped oh. on the dragon. She ain't playing. She's like, uh-uh. Okay. So there's no civilians left in the water, just us? Yes. Okay. And just the three of us. Okay. Just well. the three of us. We can make it if we try. Just Pretty Balin and you and I. Okay. You and you and I. <laughs> Yuns and I me. will. <laughs> I will yeah. if I can scrolling through my list of freaking spells here. Uh huh. I will cast that. On the remaining three of us, and say we gotta go. Uh, make a intelligence check for me, there, Drum. Um, if you intelligence check, okay. Nope, seems like a very good idea. Go ahead and do that. You cast it. This is in case the bridge decides to give out when we're running across it. <laughs> sure. All right, so you cast that spell. Well, we have water breathing on us, but, you know, that so means we're in the water with the sharks. Okay. You want to get across the bridge? You're going to dash? Well, you can't. Yeah. You can only use your normal speed because you cast I'm, the I'm spell. I'm good. Yeah. All right. So, so let's see here. make an athletics or acrobatics check to get halfway up the bridge. It's about where Ashira is, right? Yeah, she, but she's floating. She's about to fly over. Well, I mean, on the map. Yeah. No, a natural 20. Yeah. Actually, I'll say you get, because you rolled a natural 20, I'll say for some reason you get the extra pep in your step to get across the bridge. Oh, nice. And then there were two. Balloon, what are you doing, buddy? And Critty, you're up I'm next. I'm holding until Critty does. Okay, you hold your action. Critty, what are you doing? I'm going to call my eagles spirit. back and ask them to pick up Balin and I and take us over. Okay. so uh, each... I will be fine. Just get across. Oh. But I've got four of them. Okay, is, uh, are all the, the bridges completely empty at this point? Yeah, she was flying over, but she's got the little girl in her hand. She, you know, she should get safely... Uh, and bridge. no yelling on the island that we can hear of behind us. Not that you saw. Pretty much most people got the hell out of there. if Unless they're dead already. You know, there was a lot of sangling in other places, but you guys didn't really have time to check the entire island, so. Mm. All right. Yeah, then I'll just go to the eagles then. Yeah, it rolled uh, t t d20 and... Uh, Can I just let it take me? Yeah, you know what? We'll let us... We'll say, yeah. You know, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be cool. Uh, you guys just hold up your arms like, take me! <laughs> Eagle! <laughs> oh. <laughs> <And> then, oh. <laughs> <laughs> they come over, scoop you up, and get you guys over. So you guys are over to the other side. And you see that as you guys look back... You guys catch your breaths um, and calm down a little bit as you see everybody up running. Um, a woman comes running up to you, um, uh, Reed, and scoops up the little girl, and the little girl is screaming, Mommy, Mommy, and she's just crying. Um, everyone else is just kind of getting, still running away. You guys move away from the, off the shore as another rumble hits, but it's mainly. It's a little bit not as strong here. You guys feel it though, and you see the island just start sinking in on itself, and slowly but surely, starts sinking into the ocean. 
Um, you can see the sharks haul ass out of the way because a big giant suction vortex takes place as this island breaks apart and just sinks into the ocean as the water comes cascading over, washing away anything that ever was of the main island. The birthplace of this of this uh, city of Palmaflora. What do you guys do? Well, at least we saw the sights before there weren't any more. I'm still not really sure what just happened. Why oh, the heck is there a big dragon in the air? Do you stay in dragon form there, uh, Togar? Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm behind scared. You. I'd never seen that before. I need to. Right Togar's done that before, hasn't he? He's done it before. Yeah, he's done it's it before. It's the second time I've ever done it. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's seen I'm it before. Still scared being next to water. Still scared. I'm gonna go with it, guys. Sorry. <laughs> you guys start hearing <laughs> screams and sh what? screams. Natural and sh twenty. I'm not that scared. No, you're not. Uh, you guys start uh, hearing sounds as. You start seeing what looks like soldiers heading your way with all kinds of weapons and stuff. All pointing at the giant adult green dragon. He is, he is friendly. Don't worry. He is with us. You're being ignored as they start getting all kinds of weaponry on everywhere. <laughs> Are all the villagers I just saved about to say anything to the soldiers running up? Oh, they hauled ass, dude. They were they, they were just like, thank you, and this got the hell away. They didn't want to see if this part of the island was going to sink, too. Can I, They're kind of terrified. Can I you can't understand uh, it. Can I attempt to, like, pet Togar Dragon on the, like, on the snout to show that he's friendly? That's not my snout, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, he looks very friendly. Oh my god, red dragon, red dragon. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Balloon, it did not have the desired effect you were looking for. You're just like, weird, I'm petting it on its snout. I'm Can I, know? Can I uh, attempt to like. Just began. <laughs> I'm going to call out very charmingly. Hello, we're adventurers. This is our dragon. Everything's fine. Nothing to see here. Everything's uh, okay. He's make, nice. Make a persuasion check. 16. You see them calm me down a little bit, but they still have all their weapons, bows, <laughs> spears, yep. shields. Everything's They're, fine. They are not backing down. They, it's like they, they they trust what you're saying, Critty, but there's still the thing of the gr green dragon. And you kind of know, color of a dragon denotes 99% of the time its intentions, right? And the chromatic dragons are very well known for evil, death, destruction, everything. Anything nasty that could happen, those kind of dragons are known to be associated with it. So people... So I'm, I'm going to be I'm gonna be placating them, and I'm going to be like... Hey, Togar, fly casual. I don't know. Fly casual. <laughs> and I was wrong. It's not an adult um, green dragon. It's a silver dragon. Oh, uh, we haven't gone to that part yet. Okay. Well, that yeah, that'd make a difference, though. <laughs> a big difference. Yeah. I, I, was, I was wrong. I was reading off my old notes before we finalized it with the RSG. Yeah, edit. we have some other stuff to do. So you're yeah. still green. Oh, okay. Okay. I uh, I want to walk over and sort of juxtapose myself between the guards and Togar, and I want to point. We're on the sand, so imagine the villagers that he saved. Their footprints would be hidden away. Well, about all the other footprints that are in the sand right now, kind of hard to see any. I mean, there's hundreds of footprints in the sand right now. That just shows hundreds of people running away from. Him. He didn't pursue any. Well, yeah. I mean, they start to relax a little bit, but I mean. I mean, you kind of get their their gist, like they they like they're buying what you're saying, but there's still the caution, right? It's it's still, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, trust but verify. Yeah, you know, you know the tension releases a little bit, but uh, eventually the commander's like, after about five minutes of this stare down and seeing the dragon, so I'm disgusted by what Balin's doing. Uh, <laughs> we can make him attack a shark. That'd be more entertaining than this uh, whole petting situation. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Togar looks like he's enjoying it. 
I think I'm almost be, done. Hold on. I think it'd be better if you went after a shark. Oh my god. The might watch that hand later uh, in there. Boom. Show me how you spend those sorcery points, Spin. Uh, all right, so yeah, a lot of them just turn around and disgust, and they all go back into the city. I'm so tempted to cast Bigby's hand right now. It's not even funny. Ew. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> And then the kill, and then the murdering is me. <laughs> <laughs> the murdering. Is, oh, is that what the kids are calling it these days? Yeah. <laughs> these townsfolk have seen too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you permanently traumatize these folks. Not only do they have their home sink to the ground, you gotta watch that happen on the the damn beach. Uh. You know, in fairness, fellas, this isn't the strangest thing you've seen all day. So. <laughs> oh my god. All right. So that all happens. <laughs> Mistakes were made. You can see that also uh, that there were. You look like you see some ships that were that were carrying refugees that are going to the port. You can see the ships. Um, are taking what they could, you know, because there's still people that got into the water, but you can see that there were some ships there that were getting with the, the other people off the island as fast as they could and, and sailed away as quickly as they could to take refugees. So you can see the ships are not that far off, but they're sailing toward the, uh, the actual port um, of the main island or, or the main peninsula here. Wild and... Togar is still a giant dragon. Uh, I want to climb up onto his back and sort of scamper up and stand on his head and I want to sort of look around the entire crowd make an acrobatics check see if you can climb to the top of his head can he make an, a, a consent check please it's a 23. You, you're, you're occupied as far as your consent yeah goes that's right, right yeah oh that's yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you're right so it's get, a 23 acrobatics yeah that's not hard. that's not hard. well I don't know I mean do you want to shake him off or anything or uh uh, oh no, I'm avoiding that Harry. I'm uh, okay. I, I mean, uh, no, so I was talking to Togar. I mean, oh, well, I was gonna say I, don't, I definitely don't want to shake him off either. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm no, dead. No, 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 oh boy. God. So anyway, Reed, what are you looking for? Uh, I'm, I'm looking around. Um, the information we'd gotten from the Sea Witch said that this rod of Okatoa uh, was capable of destroying areas of land. Right. So. I'm looking around. Do I see anybody that looks like they'd be wielding a rod? Like, sinister looking, like maybe on a cliff. You mean like other than balloon? Fuck you. Well, <laughs> I don't know if she's really wielding that so much as dealing with. Uh, <laughs> you did this to yourself, then. <laughs> I did not. Bad Rongo did it. <laughs> I specifically um. aimed for the snout. That there was nothing about. Finn was trying to be nice. He wasn't trying to touch the dragon penis. (laughs) (laughs) In some cultures, that's very nice too. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god! All right, Uh, no, you don't see anything like that. All right, Uh, in general, until um, he removes me from his head. Uh, I just want to be kind of just scanning the area. I want to see if I spot anybody that's either not advancing towards the beach or running away from it. You so don't this see way, it. maybe I can see somebody that's not either looking to help or escape. Don't see anything like that. Okay. Pretty, thank you for summoning your 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 eagle friends. I don't know. I'd, I wouldn't have wanted to get across that bridge by myself. Yeah, they did a great job. Yep. I wanted to make sure that you were safe. I know you were a little scared, but it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Dwarf's water? No. Thanks. No. Ranger, uh, the island right now is just kind of like a vortex. It's just water now. It's just water. Okay. Um, based on whatever is remaining in there, am I able to try and figure out anything about the magic that actually caused the island to break? No. Okay. Um, I guess for the hell of it, I'm going to turn on detect magic to see if I can see 
anything magical outside of our group right now? Nothing appears on okay. your uh, your uh, radar. Okay, I'll keep it on here for the next ten minutes because I imagine we're going to start moving. Yeah, away. just all you get is pings from. Uh... Okay. Yep. If there's anything else, just let me know. How deep is the water now over the island? Like, is that statue's head like poking out it's, of the water? Or no, it's all wiped clean. Like the gods themselves came in and wiped it away. All right, so it sank like a hundred feet. Or... Oh yeah, it's gone, gone. Okay. And it's hard to see in the water right now because it's really murky. Murky and, and... You, you know, you know how that is. I mean, it's probably gonna be like for that for a few days. I'm pretty sure a place with ale would be a lot safer. Maybe one of those lobster rolls. I bet, bet that place is still going. Well, you, you know, there's a nice restaurant at the uh, hotel where uh, Ellie, you left Ellie. Yep, let's go get Ellie, yeah. I think we should totally tell her this is her fault. I mean, clearly. <laughs> she was sleepwalking and didn't realize what she did. She, she went on one hell of a binge and look what you did. I, wow, you destroyed a whole away. island. Mm. Yeah. We didn't tell him it was you, but he owes. 66 water elementals. They just <laughs> tore the whole place up. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, we tried to stop her and everything, but she just kept on going. Oh, don't, Ellie. Oh. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Uh, it, the... So, lunch. <laughs> You can't come with us, Dragon began. Togar. You're gonna have to turn into Togar, Togar. All right, I'll, I'll undragonfy now that the the crisis is averted, and I will land up standing on one foot on his shoulder, one foot up on his head. It makes an acrobatic check. Very heroic check. pose. I mean, there would be nothing funnier than having Togar the dragon wake up. It's a Ellie. nineteen. He did. He mm. did a great job. Is he kind of sitting on my shoulders now? He's standing on shoulder. One foot's on your shoulder. The other one's atop so your head in the pose. Captain, like Captain Morgan in his head. Yeah. Captain Morganing He's my Captain head. Captain Morganing you right now. <laughs> Is Finn still stroking my snout? Uh, no. <laughs> the, he, when you shrunk, that, that that became impossible. Okay. you please say to Togar and Balin, come on now? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what are you guys doing now? I hate this episode. I do. <laughs> Just wait till you have to caption it and make up your own little thumbnail for oh it. Uh, and I, I, I'm sure Kitty Oda clipped a bunch of this for his. his yeah. uh, no. His Don't worry, fan. I'll go back and do the Swedish Chef voice. I for already you. know the title. The title is going to be "Release the Dragon." Yes. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I, like, I, I actually release. like. I like Critty's, uh Critty's title. That's not my snout. <laughs> 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 that's the, that's more of a children's book with the person <laughs> balance began by petting Togar's snout and then the murders began. God, that's not went. my snout and how the murders began oh my god it just wraps itself right back around all right you that guys dragon. you guys are going back to the hotel hey all right, as you guys make your way through, you can see people are oh, making... in the streets. I'm going to stay behind and, and you know, offer medical assistance. Cause, yeah, you know, yeah. You see I that do. there's some priests from one of the local, uh, from a few, quite a few temples here, uh, are uh, in the front area as you guys enter the gates of this of the south part of the city. And you can see everybody's being kind of healed and taken care of and looked after and being wagons are being brought and you know, uh, people being, so you're able to do that drum. So if you want to stay behind and help for a little bit, we'll say you do that. Yeah. Run I'll catch first. up with you guys later. I'm going to help them out. All right. Um, um, do you, do you all mind if I grab some things out of our community chest? I need to work on something for a spell of mine. Uh, sure. As long as it doesn't interfere with one of my spells. I, I, is, I approve Balin. I don't think okay. Togar will mind if you grab the chest. 
<laughs> now you're you're adding to it. I thought you were on my side, but no. Nope. <laughs> I mean, I am on your side, but I also like jokes. <laughs> you guys are all shocked as a share makes the greatest joke ever. <laughs> all right, is uh, so um, in this town. Is there effectively, I guess, a jeweler of any kind? Oh, yeah, tons. There is? Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, a, it's a hoity-toity city, yeah. Okay, <laughs> There's tons Perfect. of places. Um, I'm going vendors. to be... And they're very overpriced, too. Think Beverly Hills. <laughs> okay, so um, I have a, a ruby that we got before that's mm -hmm. worth 400 gold mm -hmm. and then we have uh two non-magical silver rings that you said were worth 50 gold each okay um i am looking to trade that for a 50 gold onyx or 500 gold so two 50s so 100 gold yeah it doesn't take you long rings. to find the, the a shop it's it's very prestigious and you, you see uh, a gentleman in very fine silks Look, comes up and says, Good day, sir. How may I be of assistance uh, to you? Uh, we have, uh, through our adventures, managed to get a ruby and some silver rings. I am actually looking for an onyx. Would you be willing to trade this for a 500 gold onyx? Let me see the ruby, if you do not mind, and oh, the rings. Oh. Yep, yeah, I will show him both. You put him down, and he has like a little leather, you know, leather place to put it on. He grabs the the ruby, and he's got one of those little glass. He starts looking at it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then he takes one of the, the silver rings. Make a persuasion check with advantage. Okay. Twenty two. You are so lucky. I know. <laughs> I should have. That's so nice. Thank goodness for that advantage. Yes. Otherwise, the murders would have began. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I, changed I my... wouldn't have said that if he went to roll the one, just saying. I changed my mind. Uh, you get the natural one, Finn. He doesn't want to buy it. Somewhere you, you, you <laughs> sneeze as you think of Drom. Uh, yeah, he'll he'll make an even Steven uh, uh, trade. The onyx for those two items and the, uh, the ruby. He wants it. So, yeah. Thank you very much. And then good day, sir. Will... Good doing business with you. And then I will proceed to join the group. Okay. Not hard to find. They're all heading. You guys all make your way back to the hotel. Um, uh, Drum, you're still staying behind to help with all the, you know, the wounded yeah. and people that were hurt and stuff. Ellie, uh, you wake up and, uh, boy, you feel so rested and so good and, Kind of look outside. You have one of those windows in this wonderful hotel that's got the little balcony so you can look down and you see people moving around and all kinds of stuff. And, you know, it looks like it's uh, late morning, you know, getting ready to be noon. And you start looking around and people, there's a lot of activity going on. I'm not quite sure what's going on, but you can see that there's a lot of commotion on the streets and stuff. Um, but you are awake. You feel wonderful. You feel refreshed. That was a lovely sleep. Where are my friends? You have no idea. <laughs> um. Hmm. I guess I'll just go down to the restaurant. Okay. It's there in the hotel, right? You so are. I yeah. To, you I've are been hungry. Sleep for a while. You so are I've been really hungry. hungry. So I'm yeah. going to go down there. Yeah, you go down there, and uh, the uh, maitre d' sees you and and says, "Oh, we've we've got we just started our brunch for the day." Uh, Everything going on though, I mean, uh, probably want, want to grab some food now sooner rather than later. Uh, could get crazy what, what's here. What's going on? What's what's go what's happening? You you don't know what's happened? I've been asleep. Right. <laughs> well, I, don't I just... ask. Don't ask. Just tell me. Right. Um, I'm not sure, but there was some kind of attack on the island. We're still getting rumors people have been you know guests have been coming in and i've heard bits and pieces but a lot of people have been running up to their rooms and people have been wanting to check out and get the hell out of dodge um but um 
because of there's there's plenty of food if you want to go help yourself we have a full variety of fruits and meats and stuff you can go help yourself is, is it a buffet yeah it's part oh, it's sweet. complimentary sweet okay awesome you well get, thank you yeah you pick up a very nice metal plate with gold uh you know uh embroidered into the plate and uh you can grab as much food as you want and you are starving Ellie. i am I'm I'm gonna get two plates. Can I get two plates? You, the plates are just sticking there, but they're very nice plates. All right. Yeah, I'm filling them up. Yes. So just then, your friends arrive into the hotel, minus Drom and and Balin. You you'll come a little bit uh, right afterwards. You guys walk into the hotel. Where are you guys going? Uh, the buffet line. Are you going to the buffet line? Because I told you that that's are you are you hungry or are you just. You, <laughs> But it's, it's sort of a natural thing that the character does normally. Yeah, you do like smells that. wafting happening. in. So, so. Mm -hmm. as soon as you walk in, I'm sure you're smelling it. Yeah, mm -hmm. Oh yeah. He hasn't had his you know second lunch, <laughs> third breakfast. Um, oh yeah, you, you smell the food. You guys walk in, and uh, it's the restaurant's over to the right. You guys can smell all that food, bacon and fruit, and everything's over there as you walk in, and you see Ellie. With uh, three plates of food, just munching down food, um, drinking uh, exquisite wine and eating tons of, she's got just everything, eggs and bacon, bread, fruit. Stuffed French toast. Yeah, just everything that you can imagine. She's just in there, just nom nom. She looks like Luffy from One Piece, just stuffing her face. Daintily stuffing my face. No, you're just you're you're gorging yourself right now. There's a, there's a pinky out, which is amazing because you are very slender. It just you just where does she put? She it's must the have elf a metabolism. She must have a wooden leg. Ranger, I'm gonna grab a plate full of food, and I'm not really gonna pay attention to what I'm putting on it. Just some food on plate, and then I want to go okay. off into the corner and read a book. Okay, there you go. Uh, I want to check my book of useful things. Okay, you have to um, you have to think what you want, and then uh, it'll you have to ask it a question in your mind. Yes. And I am prepared to ask you that question. Well, let's do that now before we get to the rest okay. of the uh, the <laughs> pillagers. I, I'm looking. I'm looking for two things. Uh, I want to look for any mention of the word Yukatoa, if there is any kind of legend that the book will show me. Okay. And the second thing is, I want to to research natural phenomena of what could sink an island. Um, okay. Those are the things I want to look up. All right. Um, the first, the second question gets answered immediately. Uh, islands are formed either through volcan or volcanic activity. You kind of knew this already. That's how islands are formed, but they can also, because of where they're formed, be taken down as quickly as they get formed based off tectonics. The, you know, earthquakes happen and, um, causes the the land to go right back underneath the water right um so i'm suspecting this to be natural not magic hard to say but okay. when you what usually what causes something along these lines is this does not fit the bill when you read through what it says it's yeah. like two things happen huge earthquake at the point of where <laughs> it falls into the ocean or a tsunami and a tsunami can do that as well, um, where a tsunami of giant something happens off the coast, huge wave comes in and just if the island's not big enough, it can get basically destroyed. Um, you know, this just gets washed away. Um, those are two of the things that happen um, that you read this, as you remember, was not that it was earthquake 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 it just kept rumbling and rumbling and rumbling you know some of that could have just been the actual um island itself as it was falling apart it's hard you, it's hard to make out for sure you're not a thousand percent on it but uh this did not seem like that um and then what was the other thing you wanted ukatoa yeah i want to i want to see if my book will provide me with like a folklore kind of story, any kind of um, like a history that maybe I can figure out what what that person is. So Ukatoa, um, the he's known as the Leviathan Lord. So this is what the book writes: was created by the gods of here and terrorized the seas of Wildmount until the divergence 
and this is all legends and stuff, right? The legend goes, it says the legend goes until the divergence left, um, Ukato without a master or purpose. Um, a lot of the surviving indigenous people of the islands, like the Sylvain islands, the canoe, uh, and others took Okotoa as their guide and God, uh, to rule the waters and bring them prosperity, prosperity. Um, and then he elevated the canoe, K apostrophe, K I apostrophe N A U to conquer the Southern coasts of the continent. Um, uh, until the, until the jealous will of Zahir reached beyond the divine gate, discovered what they were up to, uh, and then uh, basically flipped the script and sealed Ukato away in a bedrock beneath somewhere in the Lucidian Ocean. So he he is was imprisoned. Um, from what you can gather from the book, that it's said that Ukato reaches out in dreams a lot of time to people in the ocean, nautical wanderers, shipwrecked sailors. Um, those that crave power and want power over the, over the oceans, uh, and entices them to, and, and tries to entice them to free him from his prisons with the promise of, you know, great power and weapons and other stuff, uh, and as an extension of his will and influence. Um, so, um, and then it says that Ukatoa in the stories, uh, he is a he looks like a massive sea serpent um, that coils and twists all the time, and he's covered with fin scales and amber eyes, tons of amber eyes, uh, with a uh, head and a pointed fang jaw, and with three amber eyes that mainly represent him. That's all you get. Okay. All right. So, Critty's over there eating, looking at her book. And uh, you guys uh, read your the first one online. Uh, you see uh, Ellie stuff in her face. What are the rest of you doing? Reed's getting food. Reed, what do you do with your food? Do you go right over to Ellie, or what are you doing? What is Reed? I think he had to step away. All right, time. Reed is is trying to decide on the deliciousness yeah, of the food. Yeah, he said be right back. Okay, uh, what are the rest of, you, of the crew doing? You see this all play out. First, Critty goes, grabs some food, and goes sits back with her book. You guys know she's in her book moment, so not to bother her. And then, you know, Reed just is trying to, he's like, God, how much potatoes do I want? Um, what are the rest of you doing? Food and then go over to Elioni's table. All right, you see Ellie just stuffing her face. This then, Ellie, you, you've been so engrossed in your food because you were just starving like you've never starved before. Uh, there's Hamlin right next to you with a big couple plates of food. And I'll spit my food out and be like, "Where have you been? Or what's been happening?" Horrible, horrible! I've been tortured. It's been awful. <laughs> I've been on an island before. It seems like ever. <laughs> It, it fell apart, and I almost fell into the ocean, and I almost saw my mom. And <laughs> down here eating what? Um, Ellie's uh, speechless. Yep, that, that's Just, what happened. Yeah. She does not know even what to do with that information. Uh, yeah, uh, Ashira Togar... <sighs> What are you guys doing? Watching Ellie spit onto Hadlin. <laughs> I'm not faced I, uh, by it. I, I grabbed food and I went upstairs to take a bath. Okay, you do that. All right, you grab a plate of food and you take it upstairs to take a bath, and that is provided for you. Togar, I'm I'm grabbing food and heading over to where where Hadlin, Reedin, and uh, Ellie are are hanging out. Okay. Food and brandy. Lots of brandy. All right. So you're sitting down now with Ellie and um, Hadelin. Just in a couple, you guys are eating in quietness. Ellie, you don't know what the hell to make of this. Togar's eating. You're eating. Hadelin's eating. It looks like they've seen some action today. Um, and then uh, Balin comes walking in. 
Reed's still at the Reed's still at the, the buffet table, still trying to figure out how much potatoes he wants. Oh, Reed's back. Okay, Reed, uh, you've decided on how many uh, plates of potatoes you want. Uh, about a stone and a half worth. Uh, okay, you bring that all that over to the big table that Ellie and now Hadlin and Togar are at, and just then uh, you see a share. She read. Uh, uh, Critty's at another table reading her book, you know, not to mess with her where she's meditating on her, her knowledge. And then uh, Ashira is going up to, she just grabs some food and goes upstairs. She didn't say why, but uh, she's going upstairs. So you sit down with all four of them just then. Balloon, you walk in. I'll, uh, I'll just make sure that I'm situated in a position where uh, I got my back to a wall and I'm watching the door. Yeah, that's how you see Balloon come walking in. Sorry to give him a nod. Below. I'll walk over and oh El- Ellie's awake it- good morning I think it's it's late morning yeah it's brunch time uh, you missed quite an adventure what happened I told uh, you what happened <laughs> but I couldn't quite understand all of that it's a lot of information oh this is this is uh oh okay uh if you got the story from Hadlin, um, the island crashed. He almost drowned, was almost eaten by sharks, and he hates everything, but he still has his beard. Did I summarize that correctly, Hadlin? Yeah, I mean, it was pretty good. I left out the shark bits, honestly. <laughs> oh. Yeah, there, there were sharks. And uh, the aquatic it didn't seem, it didn't seem plausible, people. you know. I I kind of left him out because it kind of made it seem scripted, you know. It, it was it was quite quite an adventure, and then we saved a bunch of villagers, and we got then, attacked by merfolk, and then attacked by merfolk. Yes. Then we crossed over the bridge, and then I blacked out for a little while, and now I'm here. <laughs> yep, that's what happened to me too. Blacked out. <laughs> like a seven minute period of his life just missing that, that is about right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just, just can't somehow it was worse than me being on an island that sunk so you might not want to ask <laughs> I mean in fairness you were off the island before it sank still did sink though oh yeah uh, where is where, where are Shira and, and Drom? Well, you know where Drom is because he stayed behind to help with the uh, the wounded and stuff. He told you that. Oh, okay. I didn't I didn't realize he told us that. I thought he yeah, was, yeah, he said yeah. that. Yeah, he said he, he okay. said he told the group that no. that's what he was doing. Okay. Uh, so where is Ashira? She just headed upstairs. Took a plate of food with her. Looked. Did you want to get down? So what is our plan now? Should we be searching for whoever caused the island to to sink? Well, I mean, first we'd have to make sure that someone's actually responsible for it. I mean, I would assume that natural geography, it's not unheard of for islands to sink in an avalanche or an earthquake or something of the such. It does seem pretty coincidental as at the same time that Pretty was told to come here, and the, and the whole thing about the rod. Well, yeah, the rod, from what the Sea Witch told us, does uh, have the ability to destroy land. So, near the end of it, when uh, you were attempting to convince the guards that Togar was friendly, I, uh, I was trying to look around to see if I spotted anybody doing any nefarious type things that might look like they were signaling sink the island. I didn't see anything, though. You might have been looking in the wrong direction. Uh, I know at least one direction I wasn't looking. I don't know what you're talking about, but the direction that I'm focusing on is maybe towards the water. I was looking more at the land, I figured. Why would you want to be standing on the island? You were trying to sink into the water full of Murdery merfolk and sharks. Unless they were farther into the water beyond the island. Everything was coming from the water. It seems like. It may like have been on a boat more. or. Mm-hmm. 
But we, it may not also be anything that needs land. Whatever it is could be controlling whatever it is in the water. You guys keep talking. I need to get some more ice right back. I don't know where else to look. Could we maybe go out there and investigate again? The sharks did seem to run away from that area. Well, I mean, that's sort of a natural reaction. Most creatures will run away from an island sinking on top of them. Yep. It's just time to give up and go back to the mainland. We can't find anything here. Let's just go. I'm gonna come back over. And... Hadlin? I think that this is scary, and I know you don't like water, but you see how I kept you safe? Um, because you're my friend and I'll protect you. But we're here because you needed this, um, this rod thingy to beat the dragon thingy so that you didn't have to ask dwarves. Did you change your mind? Do you want to, do you want to go get a dwarven army? Could we hurry up? We're trying. So I did some research, and I don't think that this was natural, because I researched how plate tectonics work, and even though I heard a lot of information that I already knew, um, I, I do believe that it wasn't a natural phenomenon, so I think that it was probably somebody causing it to happen. And I also researched about Yukotoa, and there was a lot in there about sailors and how um, he like reaches out in their dreams and I remember hearing that story from the guy on the boat so I think that maybe we should try to maybe triangulate where some people have heard stories and try to see if maybe Yukitoa is underwater there and causing some havoc or if there's like maybe one of his followers has the rod and they sink the the island because they were trying to like I don't know sacrifice us or something what do you guys think Well, uh, I think the triangulation thing may be a good idea. Yeah, we can go to all kinds of pubs and talk to seedy sailors. Oh, well, it sounds grand. Yeah. I'm going to make so many friends. And I mean, Hadlin, you know, finding this uh, person that may have caused this, I mean, you have to look at it this way. It's a person that murdered land, making more water. You could beat I mean, them up. This sounds like a person you may want to make an example of. It'd be very fun. You could hit them. Yeah, right I'm not far. buying that one there, Reed. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you're doing. <laughs> You'd look really good in front of all the ladies. Okay, now that's a good idea. I'm going to fall for that every time. <laughs> oh. Okay. So, okay, you, so who get... wants to come with me to all of the grossest taverns in the town? I, I, I'll definitely go with you. Let's go bar hopping. Yeah. Okay, who's uh, making the truck? Me. I'll go. Ellie, Reed, Pretty. I'll go too, yeah, yeah. Hadlin, okay. Um, I'll take the walk. I have something I need to work on, but then I will join you. All right, and just uh, catch, catch a share up on what we're doing. Okay, I can do that. We're going to go drinking, Ellie. Ode. Do you want to come? Kind of like part of your sabbatical, we call it partying. You know, oh, bar yes, I'm, I'm coming. Yes, yes, yes. So which CD right bar are you going to first so I know where to meet you? You guys got to figure that out. Uh, oh, I see. 
do it as a true bar crawl. As soon as we walk out of here, we make a right. We'll just walk into the first one we see, have a couple of drinks, and then just keep going in that direction. Excellent choice. Okay. okay I'll uh, wait for a Shira. Okay. Uh, so you guys go off um, on your bar hopping trip. Who's leading these this this band of merry misfits? I am. All right, Crady, make a survival check. Wow, these are really some dive bars. <laughs> wow. This makes up for my two natural ones tonight. Mm -hmm. See, you got rid of the ones when you needed to. That's right. Nice. Crady, <laughs> you scan the area. You you get lucky. You ask someone that looks you think looks sailorish, and you go, like you always do. Hey, wh where can I find information about sailor? And you, you give like your normal spiel. The guy just like. Find the sailors that tell the crazy tales. Uh, oh, I don't know anything about that, miss. He kind of looks you over. Why don't you try the captain's... Excuse me, captain's fancy. Sounds fancy. It's it's where the captains of all the seafaring... Seafaring places go. Oh, you mean Will she you didn't walk up? Sir? I'm going to go get drunk. <laughs> he just walks away. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, you got to... Out of curiosity, fellow, what bar are you heading to eventually, I mean, uh, where I don't know right now. I'm doing. I'm on an important official business for my captain. Ah, uh, okay. So the chum bucket or something. That uh, are. <laughs> All right, you guys make your way to the 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 merchant section of the city. There is a place called the Captain's Fancy. Um, this actually looks like a very nice establishment. Um, you walk in and. Very nice inside. Um, this is a place where you can see that uh, captains of ships, for some reason, are congregating. There's about six of them. And you see, sitting in a corner, like they've just been waiting for you, sitting there sipping wine, is three rings. Oh, we're we'll also with Captain Three Rings. Like, well, look who it is. If we hear in the rumors correctly, y'all, you'll be all the heroes of the day, if I'm not mistaken. People have called us that before. Uh, so I've heard from your father. Well, come on in, sit down by me. Tell me your tale of what's happened. I will relate to him a thrilling tale full of adventure and intrigue and... Make a performance like check, that. see how well you do. How good is your story? Not great. Not very good. Critty does a critty thing where she just talks about every little detail. You start <laughs> describing like the wrong. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I noticed then that the rocks were at a 45 degree angle and I didn't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then I fell and I stubbed my toe, but then I got up and then I stubbed my other toe. <laughs> no, I just started, I started describing Inky and Clyde, my yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think Inky was a little bit more uh, not as tolerant of what I was saying than the pink, but you know, I didn't want to talk about that right now. Um, so uh, he goes, I figured you might be finding something like that. Here, everyone, grab a drink. And he pulls out a scroll, looks like a giant map. He says, we be having much to discuss. While you guys be out doing what you be doing, I ain't been doing my own thing. I be telling you something special only because I work for your father. Who and hires because me. of our charming personality. Let's go with that here, young Kriti. Uh I'm a part of a group called the Revelry. We're a band of buccaneers who go about looking for information and things. For some reason, your father be having me look around this area for a while for you. He didn't tell me why, but just to keep me eyes and ears open for things. And I'd be coming across some information that might be important to you. So, let's see if we can get on the same page. Does that work for all of you? I have lots of pages in my book. That's not quite what I meant, young critty. Oh. All right. <laughs> he just kind of chuckles. All right. So, 
If I'm if I'm not mistaken, you said there was an earthquake and that the island be gone now, right? Yeah. Well, we've the reverie spies I've been talking to have been observing the village, and also you said you came across a Sahagwin, the yeah. Mer folks. That for a little. There are a specific clan of them called the Shark Feather. Or is there officially known as the Shark Feather Abyss? For centuries, they've been having problems with the locals. With, you know, how when two cultures collide kind of thing. And did not like it very much when the inhabitants took over this island. It was very precious to them and sacred. They live right a ways away, but they live nearby. And it's caused problems. Um, that shark hunt is because um, mainly the, the, the trade when this place first started it'd be uh, trade with ships ships would stop in of course but also fishing well the Saguin made sure that the uh, fishing uh, was quite dangerous by controlling sharks and other uh, oce oceanic creatures I have been hearing reports, and we've had spies looking into this, that a young female Sahagwin named Salachi, S-E-L-A-C-H-A-I. Can you spell it one more time? Sorry. S-E-L. A. A. C. C. H. H. A. A. I. I. Yeah. S-E-L. I'll buy a vowel for 100, Alex. Salachi. Yeah. Selichai recently took charge of the Shark Feather Clan and wields some unusual powers, it be said. It said she could be carrying some kind of magic scepter, that something be a rod of retribution, but has become some kind of conduit for some unearthly levels of magical power. Does that pique your interest? Well, yes, it sounds quite like something that we might be looking for. Perhaps, maybe. I be thinking from what you be seeing and what I was saw from me ship today. I don't know how she exactly caused this island, but from what I've been told from your father and what you've been telling me, there be something to do with that rod you be looking for. So what is important is finding a way to delve beneath them waves and take the scepter from her. Now I'll be making you a deal. I am a businessman. Me and my crew and my ship are at your disposal. However, you guys can keep the rod and a third of the loot. The rest goes to me and my crew. Does that seem like a fair deal? Yes. I will unilaterally decide on behalf of my friends that, yes, we will accept your help. We will keep the rod and one third of the loot. Thank you for your service. Uh, it's, a, it's my pleasure. Who we'll divides the loot? I think we can both divide it in thirds. Two thirds for me and the crew. Third for you, and you get to keep the rod is what you'd be looking for, if I'm not mistaken, right? Fair. All right. Now, we have to be thinking about how this is going to work. How do we get to where they be at? I can get you to the general location. But then what? Then what? I'll start to look at the map. He yeah, give me a, a general and, idea where it is. Yeah, it looks like it's about uh, roughly 40 to 60 knots. Uh, for about 50 miles, roughly, you can tell, off the coast. Day and a half, two days voyage? No, nah, I'd be half a day with the, with a good wind. We have a All fast right. ship. Well, Mr. Captain Three Rings, have any of your sailors ever done diving missions? I don't know, for like pearls or lobsters? Oh, yeah, we'd be... Has anyone ever had to try to get to the bottom of the ocean before? <laughs> 
Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll be coming with you. My crew be staying behind on my ship. You're going to come with us to the bottom of the ocean? I've done quite my own excursions in, in me time there, Kriti. Okay. How do you usually go about it? Well, I can cast a... My own... He holds up one of his uh, many rings on his finger. I have my own my own devices for being able to breathe underwater. But I don't have enough rings for all of you, for you to be doing that. So that's, that'd be me question. So if we can breathe underwater <clears throat> and then, I don't know, like, do you weigh anchor or something? We just climb up and down the anchor. Do you have some other system for getting down there? What do you mean? Like, how do you get from the boat to the bottom of the water? You swim down. Okay. So you just swim down and swim back up. Yeah, if you have the spell, you can breathe underwater, can't you? Well, we do have a spell that'll help us with that. I think Ellie's able to cast it, yeah. Yeah. Might be able to just uh, tie some weights to to us, get us down there. Okay. When when are you available to do this? Whenever you are. How long do you need to be prepared? Probably need a day and a night's sleep, or you know. It's been a long say that day. Would be wise. We have to gather the, the rest of my comrades. All right. Say in the morning. That sounds be good to me. I bet a dwarf has invented breathe beer. I bet he has. It's only I'm sure they have the master dwarf, but we be not be breathing. Beer, we'd be breathing the, the wide open ocean in our, into our lungs. Or however you want to be getting to the bottom. I was just trying to think of ways I'd actually go into the water, and that was kind of one of them. So, I can't yeah. help you with that. I'm sorry, I was kind of in my head there. So I <laughs> well, that's all right. So, I will get my ship and my crew ready for us to leave tomorrow. We'll sell out to the, the, the location. Probably a day just to be play safe the way everything that's happened to get out there and then uh, we'll see what we can be finding down on the bottom of the ocean and see if Thank we can you, Mr. acquire Captain Three Rings no it's, it's it's what I was hired to do here young Kriti alright I'm in support my ship be ready whenever you I'll be ready tomorrow morning and whenever you're ready to leave we'll leave okay we'll meet you on your ship all right. He tips his cap to you, swigs, uh, takes a big swig of wine, and uh, throws on a cup of gold. It'd be on me. And then he walks out. Okay. So, here's the question. How do we get Hadalyn to go underwater? Like, lots of underwater. I, I look at Reed and... Just kind of like, got any ideas? I can't get him too drunk. We're going to need him to be able to fight. Yeah. Dark with a beard. I already told you. I'll slide him over my beer. Duh. You know, for, I want to be a shark with a beard. Not a beer, but both uh, would work. Oh, <laughs> you want to be a shark. Okay. Yeah. Turn I me thought, into a. Yeah. I thought all this time you were just saying you want beer. Yeah, that's what I thought. No, no. Turn me into a shark with a beard, then I'd be fine. Yeah. You can't do right. that. Well, I have probably more. <coughs> Doesn't have. How, how long does polymorph last, though? That, that can be plan B. Besides, Hadlan, I think you're safer with the spell that lets you just breathe underwater. Oh. Don't want to be, you know, 500 feet down and the spell run out and poof, you're you and just suck it in lungfuls of water. Kriti and I are best friends. Why can't I have both? Well, because the shark only lasts for an hour. I don't know if we'll, we can find it that fast. Okay, so shark, Hadlan shark in case of emergency, but I don't know how you're going to get me in there without that, so that. You know, discuss amongst we, we'll yourselves. We'll have to figure something out. Hmm. 
In the meantime, you guys want to go back to the rest of the group and let them know what what we're going to do? I might as well. Or do you want to keep bar crawling just for the sake of bar crawling? Yeah, I mean, it's up to you fellas. I don't know, Eliana, you, you, you look like you're just waking up. I don't know if you could handle a bar crawl. It's, it's quite a lot to take on. No clue. I, mean, I just heard they might try and, you know, drown me in an ocean, so Not I'm more drowning. inclined to the, to the bar crawl. Never drowning. That's what I heard. Well, all right. All right. Uh, I mean, I, I can go back to the hotel. I can fill the others in. Uh, if you, you lot want to keep bar hopping. I, I want to go talk to Balin, so I'm going to go back to the hotel, too. All right. Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, are you guys going bar hopping? Or are you guys going back to the hotel? What are you guys doing? Back to the hotel. Yeah, I think it's yeah. back to the hotel yeah. for me. They got a yeah. hotel bar. They do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, you guys make your way there. At this point, Finn will see Balin uh, after you waited for Shira to take her bath and eat and everything. You're able to fill her in on what those guys went to do. Uh, I wanted to do something, though, while I was I there. know, but you do that first, right? And then what is the thing that you want to do? No, I'm not leaving. It's while I'm waiting for her is what I'm doing. Okay, so um, we'll say you do it before you talk to her, so. Yeah, so um, the onyx that I got, um, I'm going to grab some dirt. And dirt basically, from, where? Uh, from outside, just any dirt, sand, that kind of stuff. Okay. From just outside the inn. Um, and I'm effectively making kind of a spherical pommel, almost, um, on the end of the onyx. And I'm going to mold earth it to become more solid, flatten the end of it. And in it, I'm going to have the, um, it's the symbol of the planes. Is going to be kind of uh, indented inside of the sand or the dirt that's molded. And from one of our previous adventures, I we got a uh, a jar of some uh, gryphon grease, basically. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to mix that in with the sand to basically get it to harden to become kind of like a shell with okay. that engraving in it around the onyx. For what purpose? Um for one of the things that I need for one of my spells. Okay, so this is just creating spell components? Correct. Yeah, that's fine. You do that. Okay. And then you I was all... like, are you trying to create something new and exciting, Finn? We're going to have to do some rolls then, but if it's for just a spell no, component... No, 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 it's something standard, but there is something else I want to do later that I'll talk to you about separately. But yeah, no, that's fine. this is just normal. Yeah, okay, yeah, so that's, yeah, that, that's, that's no problem. Yep. All right. So you do that, you get all that done, and then uh, by that time we'll say Shira's had a bath, she's clean, she's she's eaten, she's refreshed. Um, the, fish, the ocean smells like fish. That's the then first you thing probably she, wouldn't be happy to know yeah. that they've gone to go talk to dirty pirates. <clears throat> um, I mean, I'm happy I'm not currently smelling fish. Do I smell a fish? I never no. went in the water, so okay. No. I am glad I am not smelling a fish either. <laughs> Do you want to go search out for them, or just wait here for them to come back? I suppose we should probably go find them. They did say they were going bar hopping. Mm -hmm. Okay, they said they would go to the first bar on the right, and then just they did not that say way, that. So. They just said that they were going to bar hopping. That just crazy. Just said... no, no, no. I asked Reed before he left. He oh, said really? we'll do it in the yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. All right then. Uh... Yeah, yeah, I made sure to ask before they left where they were right, going. Let's see first how this bar on the right. We'll just keep going in that direction. All yep. right. Well, that's but not where you went, time, though. I came back. Yeah, that's not where <laughs> you went, though. On the right and straight <laughs> that's on the not where, where you guys went. Because Curdy got a natural twenty, so took it right to the source. All right, so. uh... <laughs> Balin and the Shira, <laughs> you go outside and you take a right and you go to the first bar. It's a nice place. It's in the hotel district. And you mm -hmm. go inside and check and your friends are not there. 
Yeah, basically just going to every single bar along the way. Yeah, make a survival check. Do you guys drink anything or are you just looking inside? No, no, I'm just going to the barkeep and asking, have you seen a party with a dwarf, a halfling, two elves, and a dragonborn? <laughs> and then just keep going one after another. <laughs> and some instances... Have you fin- heard that joke? <laughs> yes. <laughs> some, in some instances, you just get a simple response, no. And some you get very weird looks, like, are you playing around? Are you screwing around with me mm-hmm. right now? Others just like, get the hell out of my bar kind of thing. It, you guys have been about uh, two hours doing this. And finally you come and critting them. You guys missed them as you guys came back the other way and went back to the hotel. Uh, you finally come to the, uh, the, the place that they were at, right? And... Uh, <laughs> And the bartender says, yeah, they were just here about, I don't know, 35, 40 minutes ago. Said they were going back to their hotel. Oh, that is good to know. If you had not said that, I would have just continued along the path. Thank you very much. And I'll give him a silver and then proceed to walk. He just looks at you like you're the strangest little creature he's ever seen in his life. (laughs) (laughs) It's the Benny Hill theme playing in the background. The funny part is if you hadn't said, they said, oh, we're going to return back to the hotel. I would have been like, yes. We're, we're on the right path. Let's go to the next boat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're catching up to them. <laughs> Seven hours later. <laughs> okay. So, That's... I guess we should just go back to the hotel, Ashira. Probably. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, in the meantime, as we've been going around, I guess uh, I might try to do the same check if possible that Reed was doing earlier. Is there anybody that looks like they're suspicious or potentially watching us as we're Make a going perception around. check. Seventeen? You don't notice anything. Okay. Okay. Let us go back to the hotel. All right. And... Let's go back to the hotel. Doop 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 doop. Doop, 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 doop. You guys make your way back to the hotel, and lo and behold, you guys eventually it's late afternoon, you know, early evening. It's about time for diner, or as uh, Reed likes to call it, first, uh, first, uh, first supper. Um, and uh, you guys finally all meet up together. You may proceed with your conversations. Oh, there you guys are. Uh... How did your? We we were looking for you. We we went along the the path of right bars all the way down. Then we finally got to one that said you had left about thirty five minutes ago. Boy, so then we came here. you must have taken the long way around, cause man, we went straight to the one we wanted and came back. That is really not a series of right into every single bar, but okay. Yeah, we got lucky. So I wanted to talk to you. Um, I'm very concerned about Hadlin. He's right. He's okay, right so there. Here's... Yeah. I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> so here's here's what's gonna happen. So we we found Captain Three Rings at that fancy pants club, and he said that he knows the thing that we're looking for, and he thinks that what I think, which is that it wasn't natural that the the. Um, island just magically sank underwater because it was magically sinking. And so he has offered himself and his crew that he'll take us to where he thinks that the um, there's this lady named Selichai or something like that and she might have the rod and he's going to take us there and help us get there. Um, help us get down to the bottom of the water and we're going to do that breathing water thing again. That's a very smart idea. And his, him and his crew get two thirds of the loot. We get the rod and the other third. Which I think is a pretty fair deal. So I said that was okay. But I don't know about Hadlin. I don't know if he's going to be okay going underwater and I wanted your suggestions. You hear all like, this Hadlin, yeah. Well, like, the answer is no. He's not going to be okay going down I there. Know. But how do we make him like feel better? Like, how do we positively reinforce him so that he's not afraid to go underwater? Or maybe should he stay here? I don't know. What do you think? No, Hadlin. Hadlin knows. Have you not? Have you not? Uh, been around Hadlin? There is the honor of the dwarf. Even though he may be fearful of the water, he is very determined to try and 
get back his kingdom and well, get to I that. This, but still, like, I also care about the inside Hadalyn. <laughs> like, I don't want to put him through trauma if we can help it. <laughs> then the you know, I have, a, I have a spell called <laughs> heroism that imbues a creature with bravery who is willing. He has to be willing. Nope. I, was, <laughs> I, thinking, I have a spell called Suggestion, where I suggest a course of action to someone, but I didn't want to hurt his feelings. And probably uh, best not to manipulate him with the spell. See, that's what I was thinking. I was like, Ranger. I could do see, this. See, oh, the, the most hilarious thing here is Hadlin is standing there while they're talking. Mm -hmm. He's right there. Mm -hmm. He actually we said no. We don't go behind our friends' backs. We tell them to their face. <laughs> We're oh. going to put a whammy on you. And... <laughs> <laughs> We're totally going to cast oh, a spell that makes goodness. you do stuff you don't want to do. And then the murdering <laughs> began. Friendship is power. As as oh, yeah, we're putting a, like, a, a white powder into his drink. He's just like, no, 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 this is fine. Drink this milk, B.A., you'll love it. Uh, this really is like that. Hadlin is afraid of water, and then the murders began. Yeah. <laughs> while, uh, while this is all going on, I want to be scanning the hotel bar. And I want to be looking for somebody who's a service provider of the oldest service known to mankind. Uh, you're not oh, feeling no. anything like that here. Really? <laughs> yeah. In a hotel bar? Not here, you're not. Wow. In a pirate town? A hotel bar? Like, we're, we're not a bunch in of a sailors? pirate hotel. We're not in a pirate hotel. You're in the, the Beverly Hills section. Of... Even more mm -hmm. so, this would be the high end one. Okay, an escort. We're looking for an escort. Yes. Then. Not, <laughs> they're not, not your standard. <laughs> they're not. They're not. They're so. Sir parts of the world that is actually a thriving business, but you go to the location. They don't go around looking for work. If you want some action like that, you just go to one of those places. A lot of them even were temples that are. I was looking to bribe one to uh, talk to Hadlin to see uh, you're, you're and say to, how they gonna... think it's so hot, guys that work underwater. Yeah, there's nothing like. But, yeah, there's no working girls here or <laughs> someone like escorts or such, such not. Oh, there there are women. There's some All waitresses right. and stuff. I'm All right. just going to look at Hadlin at this point. I will uh, I will attempt to at least convince one of the friendlier waitresses. Yeah, you if, see, if... she's, she's, she's uh, in between. She's just got, she, you know, dropped off some food to uh, a customer and is going up to the bar. And her and the bartender are kind of talking to the one you met previously. And, uh, and she looks over and he looks over at you as you approach, Reed. I mean. I, I, I would walk over to her. Um. Uh, hello, ma'am. Uh, can, can I ask you a favor? You sure can, honey. What do you need? Hey, you see the dwarf behind me there, glittering and uh, with the the very stylish beard. Mm-hmm. We need him to do a bit of a job with us tomorrow underwater, and he's okay. not a fan of water. This I'm looking at you very weirdly, but okay. He does always seem very motivated by a pretty face, though. And I will put ten gold on the table in front of me, looking at her and say, if you might be willing to at least give him the impression that you think there's nothing greater in the world than a brave man whirling to work underwater, I'd be much appreciated, and I'll slide the ten gold at her. She kind of just grins at you w I I wickedly, and the bartender just starts chuckling and shaking his head. Well, if Malin can't uh, charm his pants off, I don't know anybody can. It's just like, it's like, oh, I got you, honey. And she, um, and she's a very attractive woman, very, uh, you know, uh, mid twenties. And she takes the gold, puts it in between her breasts, and <laughs> hides it there. And she's like, "All right, all right, let's do this." And she goes walking over with you, and she's like, "Hold my hand." I walk over with her. Yeah, you're holding her hand. And then as you guys walk over, she she looks at you, Hadlin, makes direct eye contact. Is this the hero you were telling me about, Mr. Reed? Oh, yes, it is. My oh, friend Hadlin, my God. bravest man I know. Oh, we, is he the one that single-handedly saved the, 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 the inhabitants of the island? I mean, he's, he's a very modest fella, but and, yeah, and, I'll and, tell and, you he did. And, the, and these are all his, uh, what did you call them? Companions that work for him? Yes, we are all of his sidekicks. Okay, yes. all right. Oh, Mr. Hadlin, 
It is truly an honor. I, I've heard about the terrible business that went on at the island. I heard that you single-handedly, from, from what I've been hearing, but Mr. Reed was kind enough to tell me that you killed over 200 of those fiendish mer creatures. And she bends down in front of you with her breast in your face. Adeline. <laughs> Corinth came on camera yeah. now. <laughs> and she starts. She, she just starts stroking your head. And she starts stroking your head. She's like, "I find that so sexy." Can I have your autograph, Mister Hadlin? I've never met a real hero like you before. Where is he going to autograph her? Oh, well, um, we can talk about that later. I'm. Uh... I'm, I might have to be going somewhere, but we can't talk about that just yet. Well, you can't give me your autograph, please? She kind of pouts her lips at you. All right, fine, 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 fine. <laughs> she, You convince me, you convince me. She takes out a, a, a lipstick and she hands it to you, and then she kind of opens up her blouse a little bit. Sign right here, if you would, please. Good looking. And write it in Dwarvish. Now I'm getting now I'm getting scared. Yeah, I don't know. It's getting weird. All right, fine, fine. She just grabs it. Oh my god, I will never wash this off. I am so blessed. It's like the gods have reached down and blessed me themselves. Hadlin, you are a true saint of this city. I hope that they make a statue of you for your deeds, and I was very honored to meet you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, thank you. I'm sure they will. They probably will. And then she reaches over and kisses you on the forehead. And then kind of saunters off. And Havlin has a big red puckered lip smack right on the old forehead. Uh, that matches the color of his face right now. So Havlin, uh, are you ready for the adventure tomorrow in the water? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> you have a little something right here. Yep, that's not coming off. That's why I can't get in the water. <laughs> you guys did it to yourself. Sorry. If it washes off, it just gives you the <laughs> opportunity to put more on. Nope. nope, nope. What, what do you need in order to be more comfortable going into the water? I, mean, I figured you guys were just going to knock me out something right we can if you're okay with that yes because yeah. unconscious dwarf at bottom of ocean does way very well at a fight if i wake up and i'm breathing water it probably won't be that bad what if you are not breathing water and you're just breathing like normal and not drowning that is what we can do you, you don't have to drown or die you're in water. I mean, if I'm in water, I'm going to drown and die, so I can't really change that. So you'd be open to uh, a bit of coercion or suggestion then? Uh, pretty much what's going to have to happen. I think we can handle that. Well, I tried right. my bit. It was a good effort, Reed. It was a good try. Mm. Maybe hypnosis. Mm -hmm. Anybody yeah. have hypnosis as a skill? Well, I've got Pretty... suggestion, and I'm gonna cast it in the morning. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if we got rope. Maybe we could find this a hand truck. <laughs> I always need a bit of good rope. <laughs> and we could do a sort of Hannibal Lecter him onto the boat. <laughs> I could just cast whole person on him and like paralyze him, and then we just like. <laughs> And then you back to the Hannibal Lecter thing. Then we just float him down. I think I think maybe we should just knock him out, and then when he wakes up in the ocean, he's in the ocean. You know, like we try not knock to him do out the pistol damage you, part. You do realize <laughs> also he's he, he's got sort of a, a stout constitution to him. I mean, yeah, if I, we I, all hit I, him at once, we <laughs> can kill him. Oh, Let's knock out the dwarf, and then the murders began. <laughs> Let's all go yeah, have no. a nice restful sleep. This will be the problem for tomorrow morning. We can all stand oh in a God. circle, and Hadlin can be in the middle. 
No. Shut up. Shut up, Bad Rock. You had your moment. I let the smut come in once. It's not coming in again. (laughs) I was just trying. I know you were. I was stopping it right there, buddy. (laughs) Before you even begin, that's a preemptive shh for you. (laughs) Got it. I got a whole bag of shh for that smut. All right. (laughs) All right. Uh, Okay. So you guys eat dinner. You guys break apart anybody else want to have any kind of conversations before we get to the morning <laughs> yeah i guess i'll head back you guys have your rooms does anybody want to have a conversation of with anybody else before we get to the morning part of this once we like depart for the rooms i do want to go to Havlin's room mm-hmm. all right all right are we sharing rooms we all no, you all have your own separate rooms Ooh. You can do whatever you want, Johnny. I'll be in there tinkering uh, with my hand crossbow, just trying to make it a little more aerodynamic to fire underwater. Okay. Uh, along my short bow. Uh, and then I'll just sort of um, oil up the rest of my knives and everything, make sure it's mm-hmm. not going to be any naval corrosion happening. Okay. All right. Uh... You go to Hadlin's room, then, um, Balloon. Yeah, um, I'll knock on the door. Knock, knocky. Hello. I am Gallstaff, I... Sorcerer of Light. Hmm. Could, could I talk to you for a minute there, Hadlin? Yeah, Ben, come on. So, I'll walk in. Um,. So I know that you have a, a fear of the water. I understand. Um, maybe there is something I can do to help you, kind of like the same way you helped me with the longsword. Um, you have seen me do it before with the shape water spell. And I'll just have like a glass of water and I'll show him kind of what I, you know, just normal shape water stuff. Um, what if we start there and try to work on conquering your fear? I can try to help you learn how to shape the water so you can gain control of the water instead of fearing it. Uh, don't we have to do this tomorrow? I didn't say your fear is not going to go away immediately, but I do not know how long this is going to last. We may as well start now. You will be braver than any other dwarf that has ever lived if you are able to conquer this. We'll see that. Do you see how there's no, like, lost kingdoms of dwarven cities that are underwater? There's probably a I reason. Do. Because they were afraid. That means your domain can be bigger than any of the dwarves before you. Maybe I'm not... Dwarves just don't... We don't work with water. It's not that we're afraid. I don't know. We just we just haven't gone there. Maybe we're not supposed to go there. But in this case, isn't this where your destiny is leading you? Yeah, it seems so. Destiny's a pain in the ass. That that it is. That that it is, and I'll kind of like grasp my left hand again. Um, but there are ways to to beat it. To embrace it, do what you wish. So your destiny is to take back Kegheim, and this is the path to it. I will do everything I can in order to help you embrace that and defeat this. This is just one step that I could think of, but I am willing to do whatever you need to help. Okay. I mean, I'm just one step I, I i can take one step that's fine okay so then i will try to teach uh Adlin today how to use shape water but i don't know if you'll let me do that ranger but that will be my attempt to try and see if he's able to learn how to shape make water. an arcana check to see if you even understand what the hell's ha- happening there uh Hadlin. first off he is a spellcaster or something. I understand that, but I mean, 
Yay! Ooh. I understand the principles enough. Now you have to do two things. First of all, make a performance check there, um, Balin. Me a performance check? Okay. Mm -hmm. there's, there's another Balin that I'm not familiar with. Yeah, yeah. Oh! Good enough. All right, and then make an intelligence check, Catelyn, to see if you can retain the knowledge. I see Ouchie sitting there with fingers crossed. Come on, Hadlin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Hadlin doesn't even know where the intelligence check is on his character sheet. <laughs> no, no, no. So I'm just, but so not another arcana check, just intelligence. Just intelligence, check. see if you can retain this information. Oh. Mm. So you have an understanding of what Balin's trying to teach you. You get the general sense of it, but it's hard to main to retain it right you get what he's doing you understand magic well enough to know that the general gist of what he's saying the smaller intricacies and stuff it's just not retaining in your brain for some reason maybe it's just the block in your brain or whatnot but yeah well we took a step today we can continue it and i think you can master it just like you helped me master the long sword And just know I will be by your side when we're down in the water. You cast that spell just like so eloquently. There's just no way I could ever compare. And I think I just fell short. That's probably what it was. You are also new to it. Do you remember how I first cast the longsword? Yeah, didn't you almost hit yourself in the face? That, that is pretty much correct, yes. And the number of times that the rock almost crushed me and everything else that you and Drom put me through. But, but now I am able to use it. Ah, good times, good times. <laughs> that was funny. So there is a learning curve. But we will get this. So rest up tonight, Hadlin. I will I will be right there with you tomorrow. And we will continue this. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely be here tomorrow morning. <laughs> okay. And then I'll kind of just pat him on the shoulder and then walk out. All right. Anybody else? Any other conversations? Oh, all right. Everybody goes to sleep. Everybody can mark they have a full night's rest. You're all rested up. Get all your spells back and everything. Hadlin. While you're asleep, you have a dream. You dream you're kind of floating um, through this weird kind of space. And then in this dream, you seem to be in right next to this mountain. And next to this mountain is this big lake. And as you see, you see what well, looks to be like a, a, an older dwarf with a fishing line up to his knees in the water fishing. And cursing as he's doing it he throws the 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 go the, you watch for for a few moments more see him put the bait on he throws the fishing line out and he's sitting there he's got a uh a pipe in his mouth smoking the pipe and uh starts to get a pull on the on the line and tries to yank and then the, the line snaps and you hear him <laughs> he calls back and he starts doing it again and then uh, he keeps doing this for a few minutes. What do you do? Hello, sir. He kind of turns around. Oh, you scared me there, young one. Well, good day to you. And who might you be there, youngin? I'm Halloween. Oh, oh nice, God. nice to meet you, Halloween. You may call me Duma. I do, bro. Would you care to join me? Uh, I've got some fine dwarven spirits here. He's got a flask, and then the fishing is uh, quite fine, if you know what I mean. All right, sure. Looks right. like it's, you know, making you kind of cantankerous, and I'm in a bad mood, so kind of fits the mood, you know. I got the lines right, so. Nice. He's, he says, over there by that tree, there's another fishing pole. Come on out. 
I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm, I'm going to try. Yeah, you, you, you go up, and the water's up to your knees as you go up to him, and he's like, all right, uh, take the hook there, and then put the bait on, and throw it up. Now, give it a big, big throw, and you have to pretty far. He says, now just hold the, the, the rod, and uh, when you feel a little tug, you, you want to jerk on the rod, and you, you're trying to hook that uh, hook into the fish. And you get a little tug and you pull on it, Hadelin. And sure enough, you catch a fish and you, you you reel it in and everything. And the old guy just sitting there looking at you with this look of disgust. I've been fishing here for a whole year and I ain't caught that damn thing. You catch one on your first try. What are you? Luck incarnate? Well, I'm pretty sure it's a dream, so that's probably why. Well, who says it's a dream? I mean, uh, it was, I didn't smoke or drink that, that much tonight, so I'm assuming, but I don't know, kind of confusing. You yeah, seem like a confused lad. What's on your mind there, buddy? Well, I mean. Come on, let's go sit down and drink and then have a conversation. Alright, that sounds good. And he, uh, he gets it down, he's got a, he's got a little log that he, he sits down and he's like, Now, I made this myself. Oh, say about 150 years ago. I've been letting it brew just for a special occasion. You take a sip, it is outstanding dwarven spirits, dude. It's like, well. it's, it's got, it, make, it makes you go, <laughs> you know, a little bit like, a, Damn, I had some strong shit in my life, but this one... But um, it hits you. Ah, there's nothing like sitting uh, sitting down and smoking a pipe and drinking and thinking about what ails you. So, young one, what be uh, vexing you? Um, well, uh, I gotta go for a, what seems like a, a long swim. It doesn't make a lot of sense. And, I don't yeah. What's wrong with a long? What's wrong with a long swim? Well, everything I've kind of ever known, ever been told, taught. You know, dwarves, we don't go underwater. I mean, we'll we'll fish and we'll hang out and you know, maybe go on a boat once in a while if someone you know pretty much forces or pays us or gives us you know. There be all drink. kinds of our kind that go out on boats and ships and swim and all. Hell, there's seafaring dwarfs. What kind of hole did you grow up in? Uh, I mean, I don't know. Kind of help reduce. I mean, there's the places, there's yeah. mountain dwarfs and hill dwarfs. Well, there's the door guard. You, you both kind of spit at that. <laughs> just by instinct, you both just spit. <laughs> but there are sea dwarfs. There's hell. There's dwarfs that live in the air. So if they can be doing it, why can't you? Well, I'm really stubborn, and I, I, I it, it, it's, I haven't really done it yet, and I, I, I don't know. My friend Curdy keeps saying I might be afraid of the water, and that's a natural. Maybe thing. she's, maybe she's right, but she's probably not. Well, have you ever tried just to take off your armor? Just go float in the water. Oh yeah, well, I don't know, like what's really going on here, but uh, yeah, I don't really have to do that, or can't you know, do that or oh, you can do it, whatever you want there laddie i'm just saying have you ever tried it i didn't say you had to do it right this moment yes i tried it doesn't come off the armor yeah well that's that's because you just it's, just, it's, just, it's your will against the armor you ever thought about that
Yeah. It seems pretty complex for a dwarf. I'm just gonna go with, I put the armor on, I had a vision, it said these things, it said I couldn't take the armor off, armor hasn't come off, tried to take it off once, um, didn't, um, didn't come off. You never thought to think for yourself that maybe there was a way around that. Well, maybe, but I also kind of thought that because someone's hunting me for this armor, that if I took it off, oh, there would always like a prime be, opportunity to Laddie, you know, take it. Laddie, there will always be people after such items as that. Well, we don't live in fear of what might happen. What now you need to be doing is thinking. Do you want the armor off? Just for a moment. I'm confused. Like, it's a though? simple question there, Lottie. We'll go with no. How about that? You don't want the armor off. And why not? I don't know. I mean, I don't know what I needed to. I'm just I... asking. It's a simple request. Can you take your armor off or not? And if you want to, do you want to take the armor off? It's not complicated. So can Hadwin make like any kind of check? Yeah, that's what I say when you're this, ready. Yeah, uh, make a. Is this uh, like a dream? Is this real? Like what that kind of situation? Uh, it seems real. Uh, make a uh, wisdom saving throw with advantage. Because I, I, I think Hadwin's more concerned about like who this person is, why they're trying to get him to take the armor off, that kind of thing. All right, make a religion or uh, history check. The never seen this dwarf before. The name sounds familiar. The only name that you're familiar with is Dumathon, and that is one of the dwarf that the, the, you ever heard of, right? Is Dumathon, th uh, th Thon, um, and that is the dwarven deity of uh, mining and exploration. All about exploring adventures. And he's also the protector of the Dwarven dead. And as you look a little bit more, it could be him. You don't know. I mean, this is the first name that popped in your head, but you're not a, you're not even remotely sure that this is what you're dealing with. It could just be a crushy old dwarf that's just got the name Duma. Sure. We'll just roll with it. It's a dream. What's the worst that can happen? We'll mm. try and take a gauntlet off. All right. Make a uh, will saving throw uh, with advantage. Wisdom saving throw, sorry. Roll again. Yeah, you remove the armor, no problem. Ooh. Well, would you look at that? The world didn't end. And if you want to take out the rest of the armor, you can. Don't need to? What? Nice to know. Cool. Now, the purpose of that armor, if I'm not mistaken, is just to give you purpose. To give you a direction. It doesn't control you. Oh, yeah, people be wanting it, for sure. But uh, I wouldn't want to fight you. Kind of gives you a wink. So I think you'd be all right. Why don't you have a little faith in yourself there, my friend? Maybe you can overcome things you never thought possible before. A few moments ago, you didn't think you could take off the armor. And look at you now. You just took off the armor. Now, would you like some more Dwarven Spirits? Definitely. And I've got some of this dried, and so you guys sit down and eat and drink, and for some reason, it just in the, the state, you just kind of slowly pass away, and 
you wake up in the morning, Hadlin, and you remember everything. It seemed real, but it was it, you, a dream, but it seemed so real. And yeah, you can take with it whatever you want from you, you gather from that. And everybody wakes up, it's in the morning. Head down, meet everyone. All right, everybody goes down to eat breakfast. So, Critty, when are we supposed to meet these pirates? Well, um, as soon as we have breakfast. So we're going to go out and we're going to be on the ship for about a day. Um until we get there so i think maybe you should wait to make us water breathy for once we get there unless you want to do it now and protect us like while we're on the boat and then do it again once we're ready to go down but that's your this bell lasts 24 hours so yeah, maybe we'll do it now it. you think it'd probably be better to wait i mean it's up to you it's like a whole day before we get to the place where we're going to yeah. go underwater but we're still going to be on the water no knowing if the boat will break or you know an island will collapse so our meteor will come out of the now. sky because some idiots want to mm -hmm. grab it and throw it into the planet mm -hmm. these things happen. Well cast it now you never know these things well, happen how often can you cast it is it is it one and done thing or uh, it, uh this isn't in your well, ellie it's not all right so ellie, ellie can cast daily ellie can cast as many times as she wants a ritual spell ah, fair enough but it lasts 24 hours so i mean mm -hmm. we could do it when like we're before we get on the dock right mm -hmm. like we're still on dry land but just before we get there then probably a good idea would be say tomorrow an hour Reef. earlier than when you cast it today mm -hmm. do it again this way we make sure it's constantly overlapped mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. okay so ellie will cast it on us on the docks before we go on the boat Time to finish breakfast. Where's Hadlin? Did Hadlin come down for food? Uh, I would hope so. Hadlin, what are you doing, buddy? Yeah, I came down. All okay. right. So everybody's sitting, grabbing a nice breakfast. Continue. Should we take some extra food for the boat? But I don't know what kind of food they, the pirates have. They're gonna, they're planning to take care of us. So he promised us his ship and his crew. I'm sure they'll feed us. Yeah, they did last time. They brought you there. They, they fed you and uh, had nice quarters and stuff. These were the same pirates? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Captain Three Rings. Oh, right. Okay. In his boat, the SS Circus. <sighs> well, that was right, a lot so of after the boat. To palms, their hands, hands to <laughs> palms to faces. Mm -hmm. That was a good one. Mm -hmm. So after the boat, I just ignored it. I just mm -hmm. like, no, that's just Togar. All right. No, no, when he found it, it's just like that. I couldn't help but think. He's the circus. <laughs> wise, wise words. Uh. All right. Um, all right. You guys eat uh, breakfast. And you guys make your way to the docks and the port. And you can see the same ship as you saw before. And you can see that um, everything is they're, they're doing their final preparations and loading the last couple things on the ship and you see captain three rings i'll be friends right on this when i expect you to be here how are you this fine day and you young critty ship shape and and ready for a voyage yar yar i be liking the way you be talking there critty we'll make a pirate uh, i mean a buccaneer out of you yet I'm I'm sorry. I was I was looking through the list. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna spend the morning creating a familiar 
and it's gonna be a hawk, and I'm gonna call it a parrot. Because <laughs> I'm trying to blend in with the pirates. Yeah, but you don't want to create a parrot? I think I we have a winner. It's not one of the ones I can yeah. create. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll allow it. Okay, I'll, I'll create a parrot. All right. How long I'll, does, I'll name how long... it. Oh, but the story possibilities of an owl that's being called a parrot. Yeah, no. <laughs> or ego uh, just you create whatever you want. <laughs> I'll let you create whatever you want, Grady. Um, it, its name is going to be Jack. Jack. Oh, God. The parrot's name is... Oh. We named Actually, the monkey Jack. Should, har, 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 bar, rose, har. Well, you, you could have just, you know, your your familiar could be a sparrow and name it Jack. You oh, need oh a parrot gosh. name. No, Adrian Beaky is the name for a parrot. What? I'm casting a water breathing on everybody while this is happening. Ah, uh, <laughs> the the lovely Ellie be casting spells already. He's be preparing for the voyage. Well, we're ready to go with you. If you'd be getting on the ship, we'd be heading out. Welcome uh, aboard. Hop on a boat. All right, everybody, mm -hmm. hop as on. As soon as the spells cast, I go on. All right, you guys all have water breathing for twenty-four mm -hmm. hours. All right, um, everybody, get on the boat. Yep. Mm -hmm. I was Hadelin looking. Yeah. Yeah. Grumpy as usual, but I'm moseying along. Surprisingly, Hadlin gets on the boat. Oh, shit. Hey, Ranger. Uh, before we left the, the tavern, could I have gotten my flask refilled? Too late. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> har, har, har. You be having to drink the swine and swill of the crew. Har. <laughs> Unless Kogar had something. With pirates. I'm sure there's rum. But what about the rum? <laughs> I'm sure it's pretty high done. octane too. <laughs> well, we only be using it to be causing mischief, if you know what I mean. All right. <laughs> Great for killing brain cells and degreasing engines. Uh, be doing both of you. Be, don't know what an engine is, but uh, it works good <laughs> enough as is. All right. If everybody's aboard, uh, let's set sail. Critty, would you like to take the helm? I would love to. All okay, right. Is that an ocean survival now? All right. Uh, Critty, give, uh, give give the uh, uh, give the nod of approval, and we'll be underway. Is the word given, Captain? Way anchor. Way anchor, you billy snitches. Get on then, boys. First the boys. He starts to stretch out in orders and stuff, and Critty, you're just at the wheel. As they slowly start to back off from the port, you slowly creep into the water. And... Uh, I was hoping for a galaxy quest. Exit. What? Scree <laughs> across the side of the pier. <laughs> no, don't do that. That'd be horrible. Well, we're not driving the boat. Yeah, pretty is. <laughs> uh, let's just make a performance check. Let's see what happens. Well, you gave me um, ocean survival. Do you not want me to do survival? Plus yeah, you two just survival checks on the ocean. Um. Yeah, you can do. Well, that's just to navigate, so you don't get lost in the middle of the ocean. You can literally find your way around yeah, the world. Yeah, I'm just. I'm better at survival. I know, but this is actually turning the ship and stuff. So uh, right. I'll give you an option. You can do performance or athletics to control the ship, whichever is easier for you. Athletics is even worse. Okay. Nine. That's not a hard DC. You're just backing the boat up. <laughs> it's a little wonky. You know, you're a little new to this, but, uh, you know, you... The captain kind of watches Very you. Very confident in myself, though. You couldn't tell. Pretty head, you know. I'm going like this with the wheel. We're just going. Captain's like, grabbing it, but each time you do that, no, he just kind of gives you that. No, no, don't be doing. No, we don't be doing that. And then uh, Critty just uh, backs you out, and uh, you guys turn around. This. She managed to reverse a pirate ship. Yeah. Yar. Yar. Well, hot damn. <laughs> As it backs up, there's little flashing lights, and you just hear yar, 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 yar. <laughs> All right. Um, and you guys make your way. You turn the wheel. Um, you hear the captain shouting orders, and you guys get underway. It says, well, it looks like the weather be holding up for now, but we might be running into something you never know out in the opens, but we're not going to be too far off ashore. So we just be needing to be on our way, Critty. Plot our course and uh, and we'll be on our way. Now you can roll your uh, ocean survival skill. Oh. 
So that is uh, 20 with my plus two. There you go. So uh, you get right to the point. Yeah, we'd be making good time. So sit back, relax, enjoy the day. It'd be taking us about a day to get there at night to anchor. Then uh, the next day we'll be planning uh, our excursion underneath the, the, the ocean. There, uh, there are crow's nest on this thing? There be one right up there. This uh, the main off the main uh, mast. I'm gonna climb up into the crow's nest just so I can get a better vantage point of uh, the surrounding area. Okay, make an I athletics or acrobatics check. Nineteen. Yeah, you climb up there. I just want to be keeping watch just in case. Uh, when you get up there, you see there's a young man with a with a a, a, a tele or a, a scope that's looking out. He's like. Oh, hello, sir. How are you? I'm good. Good to, good to have you here aboard. Ah, thank you. It's nice of you guys to take us out to where we're going. Uh, the captain says we've got to do, we've got to do, and we likes to sail. Well, you guys are good at it. Yep. You seen anything interesting out here? Uh, nothing yet. I, I've been kind of looking across the ocean here, and uh, it's just a typical stuff. Haven't spotted anything. Um... He's kind of turning. You notice, uh, make a perception check there, Raid. 23. Yeah. Make an insight check with a, with a advantage. Nine. You know he was up to something that was mischievous, but you're not quite sure. But you do notice that the scope was not facing out towards the ocean. It was facing back toward the city, and he's trying to hide the fact that he's moving the scope to where it's supposed to be, but you do pick up that. Do you mind if I uh, stay up here and keep an extra eye on everything with you? Yeah, uh, yes, I, I don't mind at all. You're a guest. You can, uh, you can, uh, uh, oh, oh, what's that out there? He just takes the scope and starts looking. Oh, my mistake. I thought it was something. Uh, yeah. Nothing uh, out there so far. You have a spare one of them peepers? Uh, no, just this one. But if you want to look through it, you can. Ah, uh, yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah, gives it to you. I will immediately shift direction back towards the city where he had been looking. <laughs> trying to get an idea of what he's looking at. He was peeping into a window, wasn't he? I'm sure of it, but you never know. <laughs> Make a perception check. 26. Yeah, you pick up on it pretty quickly, uh, Reed. At this height, he can see in... Uh, you can't make out who the god or goddess was, but there seems to be a open area where there's water and bathing going on. Oh, some very beautiful and voluptuous women. And before, you, and before you can even do it, he's like, No, don't look there! Uh... I'll uh, collapse the spyglass down, sort of turn to him. He just says, I'll hand it back down. to him. I think I'll keep this between you and I. He kind of looks up like shocked. Don't blame me looking, but considering that the town was just attacked 24 hours ago, I really don't feel like joining that highland at the bottom of the sea. Keep your eyes out, son. Yes, sir. Then he starts like diligently checking the water and stuff. All right, so that's you, Reed. You and the young lad. All right, anybody else on the ship? Anybody want to be doing anything? I want to go to Havlin and see if I can work with him on shape water again today. All right, make the same rolls you guys did yesterday. Yeah, now I want to do something can, as well here. Hold on, go. one at a time. Let's do this, and then we'll go. Oh, I'm just letting you know I want to get something. Can Ellie viewer. go over there too with with Balloon and uh, just Adeline. to watch? Well, I mean, I am a wizard. No, it's just true. You are. All right. Uh, so uh, you go over to see what uh, Balin is uh, showing, re Mister uh, Hadolin, Kool Aid Man. All right. Uh, make the same rolls you did yesterday. Uh, make a. Uh, I think it was performance, and then uh, having you make Arcana, and then see if you can ask, uh, soak in the knowledge. 
Do we get any assistance with uh, Ellie being around, kind of mm. as Havlin's instructor from the past? Only if she's. I mean, how are you going to assist in this? Well, first of all, she doesn't know what you're doing. She's just watching. So. Did she say? Do you say anything, Ellie, or do you just come and watch? Oh well, yeah. I'm, well, I'm coming over. I'm coming over, and saying, "Oh, what's this?" I am trying to teach Havlin how to uh, control water to some extent. Excellent. Can I be of any help? Well, you have helped to teach Havlin in the past, so any pointers to help him learn would definitely be helpful. Havlin, you start having PTSD as you remember her lessons. <laughs> she, 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 she taught me my first cantrip. Yeah, yeah, she definitely helped. Definitely. Never mean to Havlin. No, you're just strict. In a nice way. But you're very strict. To inflict PTSD. You just make people do it over and over again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hadlin, are you ready to try? See how I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Ellie, I mean Balin. <laughs> Thirteen on the performance. That's good enough. So an arcana Arc and then yeah. an intelligence. Yeah, arcana. You pick it up and then intelligence. Yeah, you've got a pretty good idea of now of, of how the shape water spell is working. You don't know quite yet. The it, it, you got to figure out the. You know, there's components to this of so mastering that would be the next step. But you have a good understanding now of how this spell works and how to cast it. You just not, you got to get the details down before you can actually cast it yourself. See, you are making progress. Good job. Having this out a long breath. <laughs> so glad that worked so well. <laughs> Uh, Lynn, you have something on your forehead still. A little bit of that uh, <laughs> lipstick. I know. I left it there. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I gotta, you know, keep it as a reminder, you know. For what you are fighting for. I mean, I was, yeah, that's what I was yeah. thinking of. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Yeah, that's what we're doing with Hadlin for a little while. Okay, so you three doing that reads up in the in the observation point. Critty is uh, like Critty sailing the ship, and now we get to Drom. What would you like to do, sir? I would like to go talk with the captain about uh, the preparations for for diving and all that stuff. What he does, and what we should do, and all right, he's Drum he's he's in there. He's He's just kind of chilling on on the uh, top of the deck, looking at maps and stuff. While Critty is busy with the uh, first mate, um, Critty's you know captain. She's she's steering the ship, and the first mate is barking out her orders as she gives them. Right, she's doing a good job, and the captain is just he's keeping track of their course and plotting. A, 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 every couple minutes, you see him look down and plot a course and keep track of everything, position of the sun and things of that nature as she steers the ship. And you see him in the middle of doing that. Hey, uh, um, Mr. Captain, sir, may I have a moment of your time? Of course you can, my friend. What can I be doing for you? Well, since we're going to end up being doing, uh, what, what did you call it? Diving or whatever? We'd be diving, uh, yeah. You know, since mo well, all of us, including Mr. Dwarf, has never done that before. Was there anything... You know, any, like, procedures or stuff that you want us to follow, so, you know, <laughs> don't end up turning into... Fish food? Floating dead people. Yeah, fish food. Well, there'd be a couple things if we get down there. Uh, normally, just with the with the, the spell, you breathe normally. Um, you move, you just, you, you know, it's a little bit... It takes you a, a minute or two to get used to the the way you move in the ocean. We'll dive down. We'll take a look at what we find, um, and we can 
figure out our strategy then, but uh, underwater there'd be a few things that you have to understand. Spells don't be working the same as they do be up here. So let your friends know, fire is out. Um, any other <laughs> Quite spells? Quite literally. Spells only work in the range, literally, the basic range of what their capabilities are. And some of your weapons will be only effective in certain circumstances. Well, that's understandable. Well, that's about it. There wasn't anything special that you want us to do? You know, watch your back and all? Well, I'll be watching yours if you be watching mine. I thought that'd been to the thunder without, uh, without having to be said. Well, usually it doesn't, so... No, we go down there, see what we can find, and uh, we'd be taking action based off that. Okay, that sounds like a plan. I'll let you get back to your navigating and... Much appreciated to you, friend. What is that thing, by the way? I, I'm pointing as a sextant. <laughs> is what? The sextant? You know what oh, sextant I, is. Oh, I thought you said something else. I was like, what the hell, man? He explains what it is. He goes into detail and stuff. Trom doesn't get on ships very often, so he's, he's yeah, yeah, kind of he, asking he explained, questions. Yeah, he's, he's, he's curious, well, and you, that's you, how you, he spends it, is asking yeah, questions. Yeah, you, you like start that. learning stuff like Critty, and uh, you learn a few things. He didn't go; He's not going in-depth as he did with Critty, but he does show you like what this does and why he uses it and stuff like that. And you're hearing Curdy, you're going, Har! So saying something, she's doing a lot of yars to the first first officer who's enjoyed it, and she goes, Yar indeed, Captain, Arr! And she yells back out, and the, the crew's sitting there having a good time, like, Yar, baby! <laughs> and they're doing stuff. <laughs> How did that sound, Curdy, when you're doing your uh, Captain Orders to the Yars? It sounds like um, the reject Captain Crunch. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, make make. It, yeah, let's hear it. Let's hear what Critty giving an order. Yar, trim oh. the sails, mateys. Yeah, but Critty happiness. She's happy right now. She's yar, trim the sails. There mateys. we go. <laughs> and then you hear the captain. You heard her, yar. We get. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? Anything else anybody else is doing for the first part of this voyage? Okay. Um, so, about at the tail end of uh, past mid-afternoon, it's been an uneventful day. You guys are doing your thing. Um, Reed, are you still up top? Yeah, I, I would pretty much stay there all day. All right. Uh, you hear the, little, the 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 lad next to you. He's like, uh-oh. What do you see? Well, if I'm not mistaken, sir, that I think I'd be seeing a ship. He hands you the scope for you to look. All right. Need me to make a perception check? Or? Yeah, just make a perception check. This normal. 28. Yeah, looks like a ship about the same size as yours coming right at you. About how long we got? He says, can I see the scope, sir? Yeah, I had it back to him. We got about, uh, well, if we, if we stay on our current course, about uh, 20 minutes. Warn the captain. Let him know. I will. And then you hear all of you at once. Ship! My part, start screaming. The, the little boy starts screaming out loud, and that's where we're going to end the uh, the show tonight. So, ship combat in the ocean. Here we go. Next time we play D and D, our first time. We're doing two two things uh -huh. we've never done before. It's so early. Oh shush! You haven't been streaming nine to ten hours today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So next week, no D and D. The week after, we'll get into this campaign again on that Saturday. And then I believe the weekend after that one, Reed, you can't be there, Johnny Mo. Yeah. All right, so we'll have weeks in between each set session. So we'll have no D&D &D next week, then D&D, &D, then no D&D, &D, then we'll have D&D &D after that. We should. Now, if there's anything after that, they'll let me know if someone or people can't be there. But uh, 
Um, yeah, so we will get into this ship combat for next week. Who is it? Why are they heading this way? I don't know. <laughs> but wait to find out next time we play D&D. &D. And for everybody in chat, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Very much appreciated all the funny funny comments and stuff. It's very much appreciated uh, you guys hanging out. Um, now, I'll be back uh, Monday with the normal streaming schedule. Um, I might stream tomorrow. I pretty much don't doubt if I will or not. But, um, but uh, yeah. Uh, definitely be back Monday. Anything else anybody wants to pimp or anything before we get out of here? All? Okay. So, yeah. No, yes. No. Okay. All right. With that, har, we be done for tonight. Shimber me timbers, har. <laughs> All right. Uh, everyone have a great rest of your night. Be safe. We love you. And we will see you next time for the next campaign. Bye bye. Everything with Togar was not canon.